Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. It's the NECC Valorant Cup League. Oh, that type of stuff. My name is Marks. This is Time to Light just on my other side. And it's week number nine. Uh, we just got to fly through this, though, right now, because the game is pretty much ready to go. But, uh, Dan, how you doing? I'm, I'm amazing. I'm actually really happy to be here once more. It's our final week of regular season play before our one week break, before playoffs start. <laughs> Brief note, by the way, for all of you who came to see Mizzou play, unfortunately that game is not going to be streamed. A brief note about the Mizzou situation. Apparently, campus Wi-Fi cut or some semblance of network issues in a widespread area. There are problems. They unfortunately could not be solved in a short period of time. So we do have a new matchup. From Canada, no less, Marks, your Ooh, home that's... country. <laughs> Woohoo! We love it over here, eh? Uh, but no, we're going to be going through Lancer Gaming up against Conestega Condors. And uh, once again, this is the Champions Ontario. I didn't expect you to just die based off of that one single comment that alone. But I like that you're just a very good one-trick pony. That's pretty easy to read. But yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting one because in the standings right now, both of these two teams are tied up three wins to five losses. So I, I think that it's a good way to kind of round out the end of regular season. Yeah, so close, yet so far. Close to each other, maybe a little far from playoffs. I'm not sure exactly how playoffs are sorted out d between divisions and conferences, but we'll get all that sorted when we start to move into Champion Select. For all of you who are wondering, hey, who's on each team? Where are the teams from? We will get into that maybe in our break between maps one and two, but for the time being, we're just speeding through things as we are a few minutes delayed. Again, apologies for that, but Mizzou had basically inoperable tech issues that could not be functioned. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to play the game of Valorant uh, when your internet just decides not to work, but we're going to be starting things out here on Ascent, which is going to be Lancer Gaming's map pick. Uh, and while I'm sure that we would love to see four Yorus come to the table, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, still, though, let's see how these compositions want to be built here. Already from Condor, we're seeing a very typical Ascent composition. Nothing too strange. Maybe the Fade coming in instead of the Sova, but overall pretty basic stuff. Yeah, and looking at these team standings, we were talking about how they're both 3 and 5. They both have, they have very similar results against teams as well. The only difference is Conestega, or Con Conestoga, I, I swear, our producer messed me up on that one, I believe. <laughs> but, uh, Conestoga, they are a little bit better in terms of game score when it comes to how close those games were. Other than that, it's still fairly close between these two squads, not even counting the fact that their records are almost carbon copies of one another. And looking at these compositions, I, I have to say, pretty happy with them on both sides. I believe I saw a Reyna before we cut away. Uh, I'm curious <laughs> to see how that works, because I always say Reyna's a terrible agent, and then the person who plays Reyna just doesn't require any movement abilities, i.e. like the Tailwind or even Phoenix's run it back. So they actually use Reyna to the fullest extent possible, and it becomes a good agent. So I'm not even going to say anything this time. Yeah, I mean, when uh, specifically when you have Arena coming in on any sort of map, not going to be the case yeah, this time around. Your eyes have been playing tricks on you. But uh, just a more general rule of thumb when it comes to these duelists is it's all about taking space, right? And while your jet, this is why a lot of players prefer like a jet or a raise, because it's all in that mobility, just allowing you to overcome a lot of the utility that could slow you down. Whereas someone more like Reyna uh, you, and Phoenix, quite frankly, you have to really rely on being able to get those frags in order to take that space. So that's why we see a lot of these teams decide to go for bringing in that jet and uh it's gonna be jets coming in on both sides interesting to note we are getting a ko in for the side of lancer gaming but uh conestoga they're interested more in a breach and breach is not a typical agent on this map no i was that's what i was going to note the difference in initiators there everything else is a carbon copy everybody enjoys the rest of their agents to be at least fairly consistent alarm bot is shot out so that's at least information in towards mid for conestoga but there's not all that much they can do with that information they don't really have the positioning for the time being fairly passive in where they currently lie and the problem is that allows this lancer gaming side to gather up outside of that short position and just send it in as they will do exactly that the only problem is there's an aftershock and remember Remember, they still have that jet up towards heaven to worry about as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Lancer Gaming already on site. The jet's going to tailwind away. A great paranoia, catching a couple of people there. And of course, just throw down that null point as zero point as well, just to get a little bit of shutdown. But Lancer are more or less able to get that spike down. Don't Not really having good enough time to get themselves set up properly on this post plant. So it is a little bit three scattered on the actual site. Hot comes in, doesn't find any information. It's going to be a fault line tossed in as well, as Non is just taking pot shots from the air. Blinded up, doesn't matter. Picks are going to be coming through. Jakey on the flank is unstoppable. And suddenly it's all down. 
down to a 2v2. Spotted out here, Jakey goes down to 7 HP, but Non is able to find yet another. He shares making, oh. oh, that was absolutely beautiful coming in from the two remaining members of Conestoga Condors. And just like that, that's gonna be the pistols. It was a fairly good setup as well for Lancer. Two players over towards Hell, one sitting around towards Main, one Generator, right, and the final up. set up towards Mid. Jakey in that situation, by the way, wasn't even originally set up to try and flank it. Their original plan was to cut off Mid rotations if they tried to take that position and possibly protect a Main. But it actually turned in from one to the other and almost into a round victory. Good play from Jakey, unfortunately. A little over-aggressive trying to play with utility and caught out just a little bit and obviously caught out the headshot a little later on by Nan. So, Conestoga win the pistol and are now looking to turn it into a bonus or, or a conversion round victory. But Lancer Gaming do bring in some upgraded pistols to have something to say about it. Hunt goes out early, looking for a little bit of information, not able to find too much, but that was Boosie, meanwhile. It'll go all the way up. The alarm bot's gonna go off there, but they're able to shoot that one down. The information is given, the door is lowered. Not be finding anything yet. A smoke actually gonna be smoking their entry in here. This is a little bit unconventional, but Lancer Gaming nevertheless are able to avoid a lot of that Killjoy utility, but they have to be careful. J-Man hanging back on sight and it's just so easy. A nice little headshot comes through. Kip unfortunately going down. Watch out all the utility. Four members coming in onto this backside. J-Man can't hold it down, but Silly Shadow will do just that. Able to find two kills and non with the follow-up as well. Silly Shadow for the 3k and Conestoga. They're not slowing down for a second. These kills are lined up and not gonna right down. Overall, a fairly good setup on the attack there for Lancer Gaming, but Conestoga not only had J-Man in the back a sight to at least pick up a kill plus a lot of damage, but a quick rotation to make sure that even with that overwhelming presence over towards that boathouse side, Silly Shadow was able to make sure there was some redundancy there for Conestoga and turn it into another round victory. Only losing two guns, not a bad showing for the Condors by any means, and now Lancer Gaming are playing thoroughly from behind, but they do have the advantageous weaponry as Conestoga is looking to take the bonus and put themselves even further ahead. Whoa. Already, look at that utility. It slows them right down, but Non goes aggressive and immediately just gets punished by it. Sometimes you can fly through that paranoia, fly through that fault line, and you're going to be doing just fine. Owl Drone goes inbound as well. Scouts out the site, but Lancer, they're going to be able to plant their feet down, toss out that fragment just for good measure. And as soon as the door... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh. Silly Shadow able to find one through the smoke. The door does go down, but still the spike can't get planted. Train's still going back and forth, and suddenly it's all up to J-Man. Up against three as that spike finally goes down. Nice kill by Unique across onto the breach as well. It's down to J-Man in a one versus three. Certainly possible. Sheriff's the gun to have if you don't have a traditional primary rifle. The problem is you're swinging into three separate players and Lancer Gaming not taking any risks, not giving any 1v1s. It was a 3vx not only in the round, but in that specific fight. No real shot to win that, unfortunately, there for J-Man. And it is another round victory. However, this time for Lancer Gaming as they will turn the guns into a round victory and keep three of them into this first full gun round of the map. Yeah, and lately, a lot of teams have been trying to force up on that second round, but I I'm glad to see that Lancer Gaming just kind of, you know, they stuck to it. They waited until they get their full rifles and make sure that they've got as much utility as possible. Um, so many of these entries are just really heavily reliant on using that utility, just playing off of the Owl Drone before you move in off of a couple of flashes. And you know that Lancer Gaming have this practiced down. Seeing Clone already just fly into the back line, and that A site, it's wide open. As, uh, just like that, this should be the plant going down very shortly. Maybe not in the safest of positions, though. That Venn diagram of nanoswarms does not allow for a default plant position, at least not right off the bat. And even with that delay, yeah, there's a spike plant, but here's Conestoga. Look how close they are to the vicinity of the site. There are three players set up around the vicinity of Heaven, two now going over, with a third joining them towards that main door. So they will have a fairly quick retake, with some utility and a lot of weaponry left over. Non worried about the flank, will find the kill on a mousey, so no easy way to find that flank setup here for Lancer Gaming second time around. Silly Shadow with that paranoia through, but Clone finds a double. The all-important man advantage turns, but then it turns right back the other way. Unique a kill from hell, but that's all they will find. The null command is put forward for the backside of generator as well, and the swing turns into a follow-up kill. Unique with a two-piece, and Lancer with two as they tie us right back up. <laughs> I was, that was kind of close, but honestly, like, good read from Non. I was about to say, that could have been an absolutely fatal flank to come in there. 
But uh, all things considered, just excellent jo job just kind of holding down that site. Being able to get that round, and that's going to make sure that this next one is going to be a lot easier for this squad. Lancer Gaming will have full rifles coming in. All the utility is going to be bought while we do see the Condor is forced back onto a save. I am fairly confident, though. They looked really good with those sheriffs on that very first pistol round as well. So they might just be looking to, you know, give a couple people some haircuts. And uh, just like that, hopefully things can turn around. We will have a blade storm coming out to maybe allow for a couple of picks, but that's still a little bit of a tall order against five rifles. Certainly a possibility. One shot headshots, a consistent factor of those sheriffs, whether it's pistol round or anything further, as long as you're not at least 45 meters or further away from your opponent. Don't know what the exact patch is, but you get the general idea. Ooh. Don't be far. Or, if, in Nan's case, blade storms from any distance. Pinpoint accuracy, no matter your current orientation or position, and a free opening kill, and that should be a rifle gained over as well. Nan wants to re-aggress, but will play a little bit more passive as the rest of the team circles around them. Another retake is required of the Conestoga Condors. The problem is they have lesser weaponry. The benefit, they have a man advantage and some time to play with as the entirety of Lancer is sitting on the site itself. Silly Shadow from the shadows makes their way into spawn, but the alarm bot getting shot out gives that information. Doesn't matter. The five man rush is coming through. I'm going to be leading the charge here. Luke and able to find at least one. It's all good. Crossfire is being set up though for Lancer Gaming. And more than enough time to get themselves organized here. Clone good for yet another. Is wants to get aggressive with it, but Unique says this one's mine. And just like that, Lancer Gaming, they hold on despite losing one very early in that round. Another healthy post-plant setup as well for Lancer. No real mistake shown. Nice shot across from Luke N, as Kip will find one, but only one, and that was really the extent of the kills found for Conestoga. Remaining. Single headshot with a blade storm there for Nan, and then a follow-up, of course, we saw from Kip as they walked down the stairs. They were immediately taken care of. And playing the trades again were Lancer. They played it to their advantage, and most of they played around their advantages. A, the man advantage, or in that case, the man disadvantage for a few extra seconds, and then the, the rifles. They worked out perfectly and ended up turning into another round victory as they put three in a row on the board. This time, a bit of a different defensive setup from Conestoga. They've moved that Killjoy over to that A side, but the setup of the turret as well as the Nanoswarms, you know, being more of a deterrent around Generator instead of actually actively being pushed forwards to deny the spike plant. This is interesting though, they are keeping their breach a little bit more forward onto mid as well. A lot of pressure just kind of acknowledged here on this mid presence. And to be fair, that last round, Lancer Gaming, uh, you know that they really like going for that mid B split. And so this is a good job, just kind of not allow that space to be taken for free. And potentially you could stop the push before it even makes its way on. Despite all that though, Lancer Gaming, they're making their way in onto this B-side, and there's only a Fade here, as well as the Jet in the backline, can't discount that, to potentially make things happen, but a Lockdown gets invested. Oh, and that will extend to the back corner of Boathouse. Usually it's put on top towards that ultimate orb, but instead it's put towards the back corner, forcing away the Ooh. entirety of this push. And Unique finds a free kill because of it. J-Man did not have the Boathouse for freedom nor safety, and it cost them their life. Same with Nan, who tried to re-aggress. Nice headshot from Clone, but they will only find one. Spike Plant will come through. A return lockdown is available. That one, however, does not extend to the back corner of Boathouse, which will be safe should Conestoga decide to push Ooh. forward. They have to worry about it. Shrouded step towards the back corner, Everybody is safe here for this Lancer Gaming post plant, and they're worried about both sides of the entranceway. Kip will not find a kill this time around, and Luke actually decides to use from the shadows to get to market. They will find the freest kill of their collegiate Valorant career, stretch none the wiser, and Lancer turn it into four. Man, that, that's really interesting, actually. I love the utility coming in there for the Condors in order to really just allow them to be able to take a bit more space onto it. What we did actually see is the Aftershock gets invested immediately to make sure that they can't really funnel out of one side. So they're either going to have to try and get the hops and make their way back in through spawn, but there's probably not enough time there. So you're more or less guaranteeing that they're going to be just shoved into the back of Boathouse. The problem is, though... They're all shoved into the back of Boathouse, and that makes it a lot more difficult to try and push in onto site because suddenly you're not just worrying about one or two players just hanging out in the back. You have to worry about four, and if you get into, if you just walk out and show your head, it's more or less going to be taken off. What that requires is a very heavy investment of utility to be able to just force uncomfortable positioning, and then maybe you can take out all the members in the Boathouse there. But unfortunately, it just didn't come through, and once again, you know, the Condors are just there. They're like, well, all of us are here. Eventually, someone is going to be able to find all of the people for, from, uh, sorry, the Condors moving in, and so Lancer Gaming just kind of elite with that setup, without the Condors really doing anything, to try and force them into uncomfortable positions at the back of Boathouse. 
uncomfortability versus comfortability, the utility usage in separate positions, the real estate you gain versus the real estate that is given to you, the great questions posed by Valorant pros around the world. Not all of them are answered. Depending on the round, sometimes you still have those question marks put in front of you. Conestoga, in this case, have really worked on their opening duels, and they're looking to find them this time around. However, not really finding all that much. Don's still swinging with a marshal in hand. They have not cleared the backside of Ooh. the hut, but they won't have to. Jakey will clear the rest of their head off the remaining part of their body and find another opening kill for Lancer. Yeah, and I did like the idea from the Condors. You know, they took that time out. Try and push out a little bit more, get a little bit more space, force the enemy into not expecting you're there, maybe get a free pick, and then as a result of that, you can do things good. Kip here, oh boy, is able to actually find Unique despite all the flashes going through, but Clone already on site with that Vandal in hand is able to find that follow through. And just like that, once again, Lancer, they should be able to take this site fairly easily. The spike is going to go down here, a fault line gets tossed out, but it only catches maybe one. And uh, the weapon advantage for Lancer could be enough to carry them through the rest of this round. Question mark as well. Why well, use the fault line if you're not going to push off of it? Congratulations, you stunned somebody for two seconds, but you can't do anything with it, unfortunately. And now you run out of a fault line for the remainder of the round. Haunt across does find one, but really nothing to write home about. And Clone even finding the kill on a stretch. What do you do here if you're Conestoga? Swing together, obviously the promiscuous part, but J-Man looking to swing does not have any help from the door. The smoke off works nearly perfectly. Silly Shadow does find a single kill, but they are immediately punished for their transgressions on the remainder of Lancer Gaming. And it's now five straight rounds. Lancer, since the pistol and conversion have looked clean as ever. And look at this, Non trying to go out That's aggressive, gross. but Jakey just ready for the punish. Of course, Kip hiding inside of there with that judge. Sometimes it works out well for you, but unfortunately only able to get that one. Otherwise, the round could have gone completely different. But yeah, Lancer just putting on a masterclass of how to play Ascent. Keep in mind, though, this was their map pick, so you know that they're feeling pretty confident about their strategies and how they want to attack the sites. But... Once again, this is going to be the Condors now able to buy up coming into this next round. They do have that Nightfall available, and uh, J-Man potentially in a bit of trouble here as the Hunter's Fury comes online. That's going to be more than enough. J-Man goes down to that, and uh, okay, Clone went really far in deep, and Kip still alive in the back there is able to actually find that pick for free. However, still playing patient. Doesn't have all that much help. It has fully rotated over, though. So, Conestoga, now with a man advantage on the site itself. And odd position, especially for the KO to be in on that catwalk spot. Unique looking to swing. I don't think they've seen anybody. And as soon as they do, turns out it's because they are dying off oh. of them. Lucan, now worried about that market position. Jakey final kill onto Nan in that general direction, but they still haven't cleared the site, and the problem is they've dropped the spike. Shroud step across does give them spike control, but Silly Shadow, Ooh. the double swing is there, at least onto one. Kip still needs to be cleared, though, and that's the real problem point. Mousy able to find the kill. Fault line forward here for stretch as they will regain position of that button. They still have to find the retake in a 2v1. Yeah, this is going to be hard, too. Recon Bolt should be able to come back online, but now... Jakey got the information here. Stretch coming through. Nano Swarm gets activated. Just tick down that timer just a little bit more. Shock Bolt goes a little bit high. Regardless, though, double swing getting ready for go. You can tell Lancer Gaming just waiting for it. Recon Bolt now going to be tossed into there. Stretch's position is known. A little bit of a oh. wall bang, but it is going to be the crouch shot from Jakey. That's going to allow Lancer Gaming once again to win that one. As the Condors, their economy is not going to be looking good on this next round, but what an opening with that Hunter's Fury to be able to find J-Man and just allow that B-side to be so easy to attack. You know, if you put Jakey and Keanu Reeves right next to each other, I'd basically say they're the same person because Jakey slipping that final bullet like he's in the Matrix is kind of <laughs> scary when you're trying to find shots on towards them to close out a round. And... You feel a little bit bad for Conestoga, because another unsuccessful retake. This one a little less than ideal, obviously a 1v2, not the greatest of situations, and a fairly good sight hold in the earlier part of the round, but it just didn't turn into a round victory. And that's been the statement of the day here for Conestoga, so close, yet so far. And the problem for them, especially here, is can Lancer Gaming get shut down in any of these spots, or are they just indomitable with that gun skill? And this is one of the things, too, why you usually pick that KO up, especially onto Ascent. 
While the Aftershock does a pretty good job of being able to stall things out, it's just simply not as good as that actual fragment that KO brings in, and it just lasts a little bit longer. Uh, in addition to, you know, being able to shut down a lot of agent abilities can cause a lot of chaos. You see Lancer Gaming more or less just walking their way in for free, but as soon as that Tailwind kind of gets taken away, then their entry becomes a lot more staggered, but they just don't have the KO to get that happen. And it is going to be a little bit of chaos here happening on the site. Luke able to just stay alive throughout all of this, and ew, crazy stuff, Stretch actually able to find too. Does toss out the fault line here as Lancer haven't really put the uh, spike down yet, but the information is going to be known. And uh, they just got to get that spike down. And okay, Luke oh. End just gets the spray down. A very unfortunate way to end that round out, but the Condors once again lose another round as Lancer. They're up 7 2. You know, I'm going to say it again because it's applicable and I'm not sorry. So close yet so far. That round, especially in such a way of an eco, you don't expect them to be as close as they were. That was a 1v2 again to close it out for the exact same person in the clutch. Just, again, didn't work out for them. They did have Rolling Thunder if they really wanted to dedicate it, but really a Sheriff in a 1 versus 2 Not the most ideal of weapons. You probably could have regained a rifle from one of the two players you killed, but you don't want to risk that, especially in a certainly possible round win. Just didn't happen. Jakey looking to push forward. You can see, I believe it was a Haunt plus Fault Line, really just for some information, maybe looking for a possible kill through the wall, pulling the old Sova trick just with two separate initiators that time did not work. And actually, I'm so curious to see how this composition from the Condors is going to activate on offense. Uh, obviously, we still have a couple more rounds to go before we get to see that flip coming through. But the reason why you bring in that breach is for that you fault line. Run. When you're ready for those engagements, you want to push up a little bit more aggressive. I like it at the start of the rounds to get a bit of space, but unfortunately, Lancer, Ga Lancer Gaming have more or less sidestepped it, and the Condors haven't found much. Uh, we do see the lockdown get invested now into the back of sight, a very common position there. But look at this, the engage is actually happening on the other side. Kip's still aware of this, isn't able to find any kills actually, but it doesn't matter. Lancer Gaming have made their way onto the site, and that spike should go down very shortly. Smart usage of the null command as well. That lands onto the killjoy, so they cannot use any of their pre-placed utility on the site itself. From the shadows used, that will allow them to TP over towards the heaven position. No flank setup because there is a flank watch in that of their opponent, Jakey, towards A main. A 2-2 split for Lancer Gaming on this post plan. The Haunt will miss, no extra information gained off the back of it. The Rolling Thunder hits all four players. Clone not landed by it, does find only a single kill, and the 2v3 now both playing from this main position. Fault line lands, Jakey forced out of position, the spray forward, but J-Man takes him out. Non with the redundancy, able to take out the Omen. And the round over, Conestoga a successful retake for the first time since the pistol. <laughs> and that's just really tough, but I think that, honestly, the Condors, once they kind of step things up a little bit more, put that gas pedal down, they look a lot better. Obviously, they had quite a few ultimates to be able to use on that last round. I think the Rolling Thunder was instrumental in that retake and being able to just find their opponents kind of caught off guard and being able to take them out easy. But that's kind of the level of confidence that we need to see coming through. Unfortunately, they haven't been doing too well when it comes to the first bloods of the round. Lancer Gaming more or less dominate that space completely. But if they are able to keep a majority of their members alive and play the retakes together, this is where that composition is going to shine. We talked about that fault line. That works out so well when you're trying to move in and clear out some of these pesky corners and just really just slow down one of the swings because you can't double swing if one of the players is all stunned up. You can certainly try. Maybe just to no success. That one-shot headshot potential really needs to be there, and not very often has it been there for either of these two teams. Obviously some outliers, but it really relies on you being uh, basically not wearing drunk goggles, because that's what it feels like when you're caught up on the <laughs> line. And Conestoga, on this defensive side, a healthy transition from what has not worked to what is now doing so. But the big problem point for them is, can they keep it consistent? They used a couple ultimates in that round, notably the Rolling Thunder and From the Shadows, alongside the Nightfall, I believe. And it really only turned into a single round victory. Become a shortcoming in these following rounds, especially when nobody's on the A site, and again, they're forced to take. Yeah, just the KJ utility there, but Clone already back into heaven. A lot of damage actually kind of put on across the board. The door gets shot down. Now the Condors are going to be ready here to make their way in. A little bit of a Nano Swarm, just full, making sure that KJ can't push in onto sight. But oh no, the turret! Jakey's turret takes out Kip. 
And just like that, Lancer Gaming have a bit of an advantage here. The From the Shadows is going to be used now to get a little bit more information. Only two HP left on that omen. The remaining two just kind of hanging out in hell. They know that they're going in there. The drop is good. Stretch goes down. Uh, it's going to be another swing there. Almost clutching it up, but down to a 1v1. Both of these players down to a little bit of a spray. Even a classic bullet would be more than enough. Lugan goes for the swing. The timing is absolutely perfect. J-Man just taps the spike and immediately has it shot right out of his hands. As that's going to be Lancer Gaming getting yet another round. So close again there, but the timing works out perfectly. J-Man, watch this. As soon as they tap the spike, the timing gets the better of them, and Luke swings. I think they were swinging before the spike was even being tapped, which is just timing upon timing. Welcome to tactical first-person shooters, where that will end up being your demise more often than just straight-up gunfights. Feels bad, man. Conestoga now, last round of the half, and they're down by five. It... It, the real predicament for them is do they want to lose this round to make it a 9-3 curse, or do they want to try and take it to make it 8-4 and give themselves, an, on paper, a better possibility later? Nan says the latter. They do not want the 9-3 curse. They'd rather have the 8-4 score line, especially with a shot like that. Yeah, beautiful headshot to start out that round. We haven't seen Nan really get that aggressive and be rewarded for it, so it is very nice to see that that jack can get a little bit more space as well as find a pick. Uh, and look at that already. You can see Lancer Gaming. They're not too sure what to do anymore. They did just lose one, but that omen with those smokes, so pivotal in order to make sure that you go in and take that site. The smokes have been instrumental in their actual executes, and now they have to kind of just do it blind. Maybe hearing the haunt come in. Spots out a little bit of information, but... Not going to be enough as we see a potential mid rotation coming through from Lancer Gaming uh, as it, they are interested in maybe going in onto that A site, but already all the Killjoy utility gets recalled uh, by the Condors. And now it's a Hunter's Fury for Moosey to try and find something in the back line. With very little information, but it still oh, lands. Good prediction no of a silly shadow. Watching him walk seconds. the other way and finding the kill off the back of it. They'll be able to close the market door as well, relieving some of that stress. But the problem is oh. all three players in market. The flash lands on Anon. J-Man takes a timing shot after being flashed by the flash drive. And now the aggression can come through. Conestoga, a double man advantage. The swing forward. Kip finds the kill. J-Man, a follow-up. Conestoga do indeed make it 4-8, losing only a single player in the final round of the first half, making them Switching much sides. better off towards the second half of play. And see, that's the trick, you know? <laughs> it's that first blood. Non immediately does that, and then, honestly speaking, Lancer Gaming just feel a lot more scared to make their move in without those omen smokes. And you can see what kind of happens here. Non just kind of has free range. They have to rely off of those flashes, but it's not a lot to really make sure that in the back line, uh, you're not getting any gunfire coming in from Boathouse. Okay, 8-4 and a half. Now we're going to be seeing these, swap, these sides swap around. And I'm very curious to see how the Condors want to move forwards on this. I think that their composition lends for a lot more of a faster playstyle, more aggressive playstyle, uh, especially with that breach coming in to make sure they clear out those corners and go aggressive on it. Aggression could very well play out for them. Could also hurt more than it helps. Depends on how they set up around their aggression. Recon bolt shot out, no possibility of information. Haunt being used. This is towards mid, but I don't think it's going to find all that much. Nobody's there. Nobody's seen. So a lack of information, technically information in and of itself. Conestoga will look to push off the back of that. And now they're looking to split B, but there should be enough information for them. There is. They do know it's looking to be a B push on this defensive side. But can Lancer Gaming A, find the rotations in time, and B, most importantly, find the kills to make sure that's no longer the case. What a cheeky little position there. Look at this, now Lancer Gaming, they're making their way around, but Clone actually gets caught into the trap. Beautiful little crossfire set up there. Now you see the Condors, they're like, wait a second! We might have forced that rotation, what if we just went A instead? Lancer Gaming just getting a whiff of that. Potential back off, as we do see the rotations come through, but we will see the Condors make it there first. And as a result, we should be able to get that spike down, it's going to be 4v5 on this retake. On today's episode of how many retakes do we see in a single map? The answer, all of them, apparently. All four players set up towards heaven here for Lancer as they have the full retake set up. There is a 4v3 on the site itself, with the fourth being around Ooh. towards that door position, but a double from Non through the wall, no less, make it a third across on a Jakey to close out the round. Clean finish and a clean up there for Conestoga, as they will take the second half pistol similar to that of the first. And I liked the idea from Lancer Gaming and how they wanted to approach that. You know, they just had everybody jump down at the exact same time, but 
The, just honestly, the timings kind of worked out better for Conestoga in being able to just shut them down as they just all flew off of Heaven. Uh, didn't even need Kip on that flank, who was getting ready to just kind of attack Heaven and then potentially surprise some of the members of Lancer Gaming from behind, but completely unnecessary. So they do get this pistol round, um, just like they did on the first one. And now they're going to be bonusing a little bit more. Buying up, a, sorry, not bonusing, but buying up SMGs moving into this next one, giving them a clear gun advantage. Lancer Gaming, they've completely left B-side open, only will use that Killjoy turret to get the information just in case somebody does decide to hit. Lancer playing very passive towards the rest of the map. That's their one real problem. A-site, sure, fully in their favor. B-site, I don't know, technically. They're, they're going to know when somebody pushes B, but they're not really going to be able to do all that much about it unless there's some insane shots from the Sova towards CT. That may very well be all she wrote in terms of the defenses on that side of the map. But full mid control again here for Conestoga. Lancer want to have absolutely nothing to do with it. Seize towards Pizza, and it's full control in towards B control. They're going to be able to take care of the turret. They shoot it out, and that's basically a full free plant. Not much you can do about it if you're mousy. A classic in hand, less than ideal for long-range engagements. And Lancer Gaming, again, everybody take a drink, they're forced to retake. Uh, assuming they get the spike down. Okay, there we go. Spike's now retaking. <laughs> And that's the thing, those are precious seconds being ticked away, allowing Lancer Gaming to get themselves set up. Look at this, they're already moving in on a site. They just have to worry about the Omen in the back there. Natural Shock being used as well, tossed into the flurry of the utility. Flash Grenade gonna go off top, the top here. J-Man just watching it so closely. And yeah, we're gonna be seeing the impact of that Omen there. Finally, a couple weapons are recovered by Lancer Gaming, but it is just through a wall and a smoke that they're able to find Luke N. Now all up to clone in a 1v4 situation. Does have a Spectre, but only 62 HP, and now the Killjoy turret gets that information. Prowler tossed in from behind as well. Clone watching for it, gets a couple of dinks, only finds one on the way down. As the Condors, they secure that second round, making the scoreline only 8 to 6 now. Lancer, even with the weapon disadvantage, they tried to throw everything in there. Nano swarms, flash drives, the cloud bursts themselves, the kitchen sink, seemingly everything. Yet, it just didn't really work out in their favor. Again, the weapon prowess for Conestoga worked out in their favor. And again, we see a third round of a half where Conestoga is looking to bonus, and Lancer's trying to shut it down. Brief reminder, if you're not looking at the scoreboard, last time we had a bonus round, Lancer Gaming won that. And then the following seven rounds, we'll see if it works out for them here as well. Because if it did, well, that would turn into a map victory for them. Bless you, by the way. Found them. Bless you twice. My bot. Thank you. Oh. Lancer are now looking to defend this B side, but with a lack of manpower. That's a problem for him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Being here with the Condors. Once again, they slow down their pace of game. Uh, they're so fast at taking that mid control, and as soon as they get it, they're like, hey, Lancer, you gotta sit here and you gotta chill and think about your decisions. Not really hitting in, but as soon as that smoke goes down, the dark cover, we expect to see a little bit more aggression here. Lucy as well as Jakey in the back. Don gonna be taking first point. Moosey goes down first, but Jakey holds it down. Able to find a 2k with a spray down, making a three. J-Man onto the side, but Kip finally gets that one back, but it was such an expensive round. That's enough. They don't have a spike, and they can't really get it for free. Hold up, oh, wait a second. Oh. Silly Shadows drop clone. That's a rifle, and Not certainly really a possibility good. of a round victory. Reminder, Conestoga came into this round with a significant weapon disadvantage, but Kip may very well just turn it into a round victory. They do indeed. Somehow the Killjoys combine for six kills, but Conestoga has Kip find the last two important ones, and they walk away with a round victory off the back of it. This was a bonus round. They walked into full rifles on the Lancer side. Jakey the most important of those five, and yet they still are able to walk away with a round victory. Silly Shadow, important kill towards mid, and the tip a clean clean up towards this BCT side. And Conestoga, they win the bonus this time around. This is a dangerous proposition now for Lancer to come back from. Yeah, at this point we might be seeing that tied up 8-8 scoreline. Just based off of that round alone, we are going to be seeing Lancer Gaming now taking a timeout. But so far, the Condors, they look really good on this attack. Uh, of course, we did see a little bit of heroics from the Killjoys, just like you said. But given the fact that they were able to move in there, their economy is going to be looking nice and pristine. More than enough money to buy up everything that they're going to need in this next one. And on top of that too, generating, getting them, honestly, both of these teams, getting themselves a little bit closer to having those Killjoy lockdowns available, which are such an important tool, especially onto Ascent, as we've pretty much seen thus far. Lancer Gaming, 
There's no better time to take a timeout than, I suppose, when you're losing consecutive rounds. Also, better time for us to see very cute teddy bears from across the map. Thank you very much, Caroline. By the way, <laughs> while we have a Best part. <laughs> shout out to our production staff slash observing team. Storm Warrior, our producer for the day. Caroline, a.k.a. SGK Carol, our observer for the matchup as well. Actually, for both of our matchups today, if you want to stick around for a second as well. If not, you're just a fan of the, our two Canadian teams. Honestly, understandable, but you Woo. probably should because our next game's pretty clean. My Ready. Okay, Gondor's taking a lot of space on the B, at least able to pick up that ultimate orb, which is going to get the Nightfall online. Good prioritization. I think that that's going to allow for a lot of these faster hits. You toss out the Nightfall, you have an idea on where they might be, and then you hit them with the Fault Line, and it's going to be nice and clean moving in. They're going to make their way all the way down to this A site. But look at this, Lancer Gaming, given the fact that they have pushed out on mid, they're waiting for that rotation. They're not going to be able to find anybody, actually, because the Condors are making their way just down to A main. Uh, no information or sound given, but as soon as that Prowler goes, it's going to be clear where they're going. The problem is, do you try and retake this quickly on the Lancer side? The answer seems to be no. Reminder, they did just lose their first full gun round, at least their first buy round. So they don't have all that much to work with in terms of either utility nor weaponry. You can see Unique only working with a Sheriff on that Heaven rotation. And the problem here for Lancer, lack of utility, lack of weaponry, and an even man count. No advantages for them whatsoever. Utility, maybe. There's information if you can work off the back of it. And Clone actually turns it into an opening kill. Now a possibility is here for the retake of Lancer game. One scene towards Hell, the right clicks no land. A follow-up from Luke, and it's down to a three versus one. Hell, the only final position, and it turns out to be the final boss with low HP and a one-shot headshot for Clone. As Lancer Gaming, they lose the bonus round denial. But who needs weapons? They turn it to a three-round <laughs> victory to re-extend it up to two. And I really like the way that Lancer Gaming look in the midst of all of this chaos. Like, look at this craziness. Clone goes down, gets the information off the Owl Drone, able to find J-Man, then looks for more, anticipates, sees the barrel there, and goes for the right click, drawing enough attention to allow Luke to be able to move in as well. See, this is what I really liked about Lancer Gaming's attack, just in general, was Clone was not afraid to just move in there and lead the charge, and the rest of Lancer Gaming were very much willing to follow up on that space that was always given to Clone. And you can see it even on these retakes. Clone goes in first, but the rest the squad have their back and are more than happy to move in and use clone almost as a distraction to be able to secure a couple of kills and just completely swing the round into their favor. Now sometimes baiting your team is good if it's very well set up and <laughs> it also helps when clone as the bait also finds actual kills. Unique maybe not so lucky as Nan just tailwind straight into them and drops them like a clothesline across the board. So some control gained back, but swinging into Ooh. two players, never a recipe for success. Nan is shut down, their overaggression turns into a fight loss, and Clone very lucky to be alive as well. Some skeet shooting, possibly for J-Man, just does not work out for them. No, and honestly, that was a very pivotal pick. Making sure that that market pressure just completely gets shut down. Now it's a 3v4. We're going to be seeing the Condors make their way over onto this A site, but they have to be careful. Omen already ready in heaven, but utility being tossed out as well. But you know that it's going to be more than enough for Lancer to be able to play this retake properly. Spike goes down 4v3. Let's see how they play this out. And retake possibilities. Man advantage. No ultimates on either side other than the Blade Storm, but there's enough weaponry here for the Lancer Gaming side to really not require it. Kip on this flank. We've seen Killjoys on a flank before. This one not noted just yet, and the timing may very well get the better of them. Alarm not set up towards that flank, but they now know certainly that Kip is on this side. Ooh. One kill only found, and they are now out in the cold, exiled from the site, and held down. Jakey will shut them down. And Lancer Gaming, the first team to 10 rounds. Double digits, theirs here on Ascent. Yeah, and right now, Lancer Gaming, they seem like the type of team that's going to make sure that they're dotting all of their I's and crossing all their T's. The way how they played that was just so well executed, not even really allowing that flanking potential to be a problem at all. They're making sure to do everything very textbook style, and that's the reason why things are coming out so nicely. I mean, you can even just tell at the very end of that round, making sure that two people were ready for the swing, they knew the positioning, just allow to make sure that the defuse can come through. It's just a very well executed retakes coming in from Lancer. 
They're basically setting themselves up for success and then in the moment also finding ways to put themselves further forward to basically have engagements where they're already favored. For instance, information gain off the back of alarm bots and refrag possibilities on a consistent basis. Clone here with the operator in hand, obviously the better weapon to have at long range. The split, oh. I believe they've been seen, but they don't find the kill. They do with second time around, Silly Shadow taken care of. I'm not sure if Clone has seen the second player in this general vicinity. J-Man's still waiting towards this main cubby and has retrieved a bulldog as well from their fallen comrade. The problem is they still need to be able to turn it into a kill and they're being held down on the long angle by Clone. Kip gets spotted out. It's gonna be an aldrin, but look at this. Just allow the swarm grenade to go off. Never mind, not gonna be the oh. case. A beautiful shot coming in from Moosey. Now it's gonna be the recon dart tossed onto the ground as Stretch is able to at least find one kill, but now it's all Stretch up against the world. You try and at least get a headshot in, but it's not gonna be enough when three members are gonna be swinging you as well as Lancer Gaming now find themselves onto 11. But a beautiful opening shot from Clone. Really just setting the pace. Once again, it's these first bloods that really determine how the rest of the round goes. Also, keeping in mind that Conestoga Condors didn't necessarily have the full uh, potential in front of them, but things are slowly getting better and better for Lancer Gaming while this gets closer and closer for the Condors losing this map number one. I like the timing on this timeout. Conestoga in that round didn't have the best of weaponry, so they didn't call it beforehand, not really setting themselves up for failure. Now they should be into a full buy situation, and they'll call a timeout prior to the round starting. Try and making sure to A, set themselves up for success, and B, figure out where their shortcomings are. Maybe losing gunfights, setting themselves up as a team rather than for individual 1v1s, because originally those were going their way, notably in the pistol and conversion rounds of both halves, and then the bonus round of the previous round as well, but since then, not all that much has gone their way. Lancer Gaming has found A, opening kills, B, opening real estate, and most importantly, C, refrags. Their utility usage has been near perfect, and Conestoga needs to find a way to tear this defense apart, layer by layer, onion layer by onion layer, <laughs> and make Lancer cry. Because Conestoga, they're starting to run into a situation where you are very close to not being able to come back from, to the point where... If they lose this round, best case scenario, overtime. And that's not the most promising of situations to be in. No. Keep in mind, though, this is, once again, Lancer Gaming's map pick. It's gonna be a paranoia comes in first. Clone now aware of what's going on here. Here's it. Ooh, Good still night. able to walk away. Somehow finds the pick onto camp and able to tailwind away before losing their own life. And once again, Lancer Gaming, they pick up that first blood. Let's see how the Condors want to respond to it. Thus far, they have been lacking in their response just yet. It is just the Killjoys, so thankfully they still will be able to properly engage with more than enough utility. But uh, look that, it all starts to fall apart. Luke N hanging out in wine is able to find two. And uh, this is going to be very hard for just two agents to be able to secure. And a lot of ultimates available for Lancer. Oh, and Clone even rotated over. I was going to bring it up earlier as they were holding the cross, but Luke Eden even swung before that was a possibility. Silly Shadows on a 1v5 to deny map point. Granted, it is, again, as you mentioned, Lancer gaming that pick. The problem is, Silly Shadow turns around. Ooh. They do find a first kill. Looking for a second. Unique is okay. taken down through the wall, no less. Now, certainly a possibility. 1v3. They have from the Shadows available. They can go to B should they choose to do so. Sound cues are there. They cut sound, however, a little bit too early, so giving away the fact they are indeed pushing towards the safe left. side, of which, again, is being held down by two separate players, one of them possessing the Operator. I'm not liking their chances, but it's certainly a possibility if they use from the Shadows. They cannot afford to push this A-side. Well, I do think it is possible. I don't know if it's going to be enough. You have to just He's not gonna do it. wait this one it. out. Yeah, just going to save that one. I think that's the right call. Uh, could have had the For the Shadows to be able to get that spike down, but then you find yourself in a 1v3 scenario. You would have at least one Dark Cover and a couple of Teleports, but... Fortunately, I don't think that's going to be more enough to be able to win a round. And so, oh no, no oh, can't even way. keep the gun after all. Beautiful just kind money. of guessing coming through there. And I think that's the reason why we wanted to see that save. But once again, clone, unbelievable stuff. Finds Kip right off the bat and able to just completely shut the round down. With that operator, so deadly. They got to be watching out for clone, especially two on these longer angles. You know, I wish I had the left-handed dexterity of clone. Because I can find shots like that, I just can't be able to tail safely. 
That's why I was a chamber crutch when chamber was still, you know, a viable agent. You <laughs> didn't have to rely on your, like, index finger to press D while you strafed away. Non, however, not worried about the opening. Will find that opening kill. Mousy shot, Ooh, I do not believe, good. finds anything. It, most it was a leg. A rolling thunder to the back corner of sight. Silly Shadow actually lands in it, but will still be safe. And sight control now here for Conestoga. Lancer looking to retake for the map. Keep in mind, Lancer. They've got more than enough ultimates to be able to pull this one together. Hunter's Fury available if they do want to try and fight this lockdown, but I don't know that this is going to be the round for them to do that. They are going to be backing off here, but keep in mind, they've got a lockdown ready to go on their own. Now they're going to be setting themselves up. Time pressure is going to be pretty high here. Seeing how Lancer executes might be good enough. Never mind, look at that, through the smokes. J-Man able to find two, and now it's all up to Jakey. This one, you save that lockdown, but you try and get them to drop as many rifles as they possibly can. Jakey looking for yet another little headshot, but this round is all but over. The Condors are going to cling to life on this round. Clean round to come back for on this Condor's side. Stretch will find the final kill required, and Jakey's taken care of. Conestoga, important round for them to win. Technically a thrifty, they had significantly lesser weaponry, but they still win the round off the back of their main rifles and setup. Their utility was good. Finding the opening kill, I think, all important, as Nan was able to just strafe across. But Clone's picking it up again. This is Lancer Gaming's last real full buy before they'll be forced to save. They're probably going to have three more before we go to OT, this one included. Conestoga, this is their first of three obstacles to take down, or first, second to four, depending on how you look at it, if they want to try and send this one to overtime. And if you're Lancer Gaming, you've got four ultimates online. I think you just try and stay alive, play that retake, pop all the ultimates, and be able to find a couple of cheeky picks. Oh, clone. Almost found one there. Uh -oh. Unable to find it after all. Never mind. Silly Shadow going to be going down. Double dipping, though. Looking for yet another. Will find Stretch as well. Make it a triple down. J Man gets spotted out. Swing isn't going to come through. The scope not actually watching J Man's position. Kit might be just on the other side, but this operator has already been such a menace, and now the lockdown gets invested as well. J-Man's positioning is going to have to get forced out here. Luken takes point first. Oh, the swing is going to be good. J-Man able to find one trade. It's going back and forth, but suddenly it's all up to one. It is J-Man as Luke N oh, is no. able to find the spray down. And just like that, Lancer Gaming, they press X to win and are able to win it out 13-8 over Conestoga Condors. Clone well, almost finding a 3k there. I appreciate the setup for Lancer in the final round as well. You saw the lockdown use, that was actually to force them out of main and into the scope of Clone. But again, they just did not know about J-Man. J-Man died from above here. You'll see the switch to the Omen in the last second. But it was a fairly clean round victory to close things out. And most importantly, they played around their advantages. Not only did they have full rifles, they had Clone on the Operator who was getting aggressive, but with help to make sure there was a refrag should there be one required. And most importantly, like you said, press X to win. Everybody <laughs> used their ult if they had a viable one. It was a very clean final round, even with those two kills not going their way. The cleanup was there, as was the map. Yeah, and just like that, Lancer are able to win out Ascent, which was their map pick. Just on the other side of this break, we're going to be having the Condor's map pick, which is going to be Fracture. So bear with us. We will be going to a quick break, but then when we get back, we're going to have map two ready to go. We'll see you on the other side.
At the beginning of the show, you usually have the rosters, the teams, and the map bands. But we didn't do that because we were in a little bit of a rush. While we have some time, let's have a mid-show. Not mid is in the descriptor of how good something is, mid is in the descriptor of time between... <sighs> We're gonna take a look at our rosters just to concretely say who's playing who. Let's first take a look at the Condors. I'm time to late. Joining alongside me, by the way, is Mark Slancer Gaming, our first squad. Jakey, Lucan, Mr. Arab 4K, who I believe is subbed out for today. Mousy and Unique on the board. Seniors as well, four of them, as a matter of fact. So Lancer looking to pick up a title before they exit. Yeah, and uh <laughs> Man, you were so excited to just say that one. Didn't I? I, know, right? <laughs> I hope it landed exactly how you wanted it to. But all right, let's move. Let's move over and see the Conestoga Condors roster here as well. Let's kind of see which players we're going to be working with. And we've got J-Man, Kip, Stretch, Non, and I am Silly Shadow. So all these players you have actually seen on the active roster and are currently playing in this match. So now let's head over to the map vetoes and bands just to catch everybody up with what is going on. And uh, well, basically we saw map number one already which was going to be ascent once again lancer was the one that did pick that one but the condors well they have picked fracture as our second map so uh that's gonna be where we're going there i know it just says a lot of loading and uh, unfortunately it's not fully labeled but you're just gonna have to trust us on this one that the next map that we're gonna be going to is gonna be the condors pick which is on fracture i mean hey the three maps that we have are all correct the order it maybe not uh, it is Ascent, Fracture, Split in that order for all of you curious. Apologies for Google Sheets not fully functioning apparently. Not maybe wanting to catch up for the broadcast. Quick Switches, not the greatest fan. But, as you take a look at us, I, I do have to say I'm really excited for Fracture. Personal fan of the map, and I, I have to say, on a consistent basis, Fracture delivers good games. Especially with the recent changes to the map, while they've been slight, they've been quality of life changes and I personally love them. So, maybe not as recent, but it, with how often I get to see some of the teams play it, it feels recent still. Yeah, I mean, a lot of how Fracture has been developed over time, ever since these changes that you're talking about were more or less implemented, we're starting to see teams really just kind of embrace Fracture um, in a very swooping motion. Originally, Fracture was like the black sheep, you know, no one wanted to talk about it, no one wanted to interact with it at all. But as soon as these changes kind of happened, and I believe there was one of the larger VCT tournaments that really showcased the potential of the map, uh, suddenly all the teams just loved going in on the Fracture. And we saw a lot of different compositions coming in of course from the chamber meta that's when we had that neon just zip zapping their way into things but now we seem to be on a little bit more of a raise tear where you know you bring in that fade and raise and make sure that you kind of got things that way but you do bring in that killjoy as well as that sentinel to be able to just lock down the sites a little bit better and really just use those swarm grenades to be very effective at stopping these choke points uh while attackers are pushing in I, I think the choke points on a consistent basis also show how different utility can be used to either get you in or out of a site, and post plants are always a real point of contention for an attacking squad. I know when I play post plants on Fracture, I always get absolutely dumpstered because I'm at about the rank where lineups start becoming a thing, and I just don't go into the training ground. It, it <laughs> I don't. I don't use lineups. I get dumpstered by some brimstone who's like a year and a half away from me. Yeah. It, it's it's so demoralizing. But at the same time, just straight up gunfights. I'm okay. And most importantly, communication. By the way, if you play ranked, uh, voice chat's a thing. Just figured I'd let you all know. Some people apparently haven't gotten that memo. I know tactical first person shooters, communication don't always go hand in hand. <laughs> totally should though. I, I, I had to get that spiel out of the way. I've been waiting. For <laughs> I was about to say, weeks. you're bringing a lot of personal gripes to the cast tonight, huh? <laughs> Well, we are going to be loading into our game now, but I, I am very curious to see what these compositions are going to be. Of course, we have that Brimstone Breach. Uh, they're pretty big mainstays. Usually, we did see a little bit of KO come in as well. But once again, things have kind of gotten shaken up quite a bit. And so, would be very curious to see what these players are going. And immediately, we're going to be lighting up the screen there. Of note, Non going to be locking in on the Neon once again. Meanwhile, Clone is going to be hovering that jet pick. And quite frankly, Clone fantastic opera. I think that this is going to be something that the Condors have to be a little bit more aware of, just with how much damage Clone was able to inflict on their team before they even moved in onto any of the sites. 
Bones aggression has worked out fairly well on a consistent basis for Lancer. And then starting on the defensive side, I have to say I'm a little scared for Condors. The only rounds that Condors won in the second half were the pistol round, the conversion round, and the bonus round. After that, it's like they weren't even in the server anymore. And it was kind of scary to see how quickly Lancer took care of them because it looked good. They had opening picks, they set themselves up for success, Clone is good at the game, and most importantly, they were playing refrags. I think those were the four winning conditions for them. We're already moving into the game, Conestoga getting a plant down, and post-plant situation here as Lancer needs to retake. <laughs> They've been pretty good at this in the rounds past, we'll see if it works out for him here. Yeah, told you. It's always going to be that brim and breach all the way, buddies to the end, wearing nice and orange, having beautiful facial hair as well. Now, it is going to be Jakey and Unique kind of coming moving in here. Unique still has one flash drive available, so Lee, just in the back there, could make all the difference whether or not this comes through. It's going to be the cage that gets tossed out first. Unique so clean with that headshot on the silly. And now it's all up to stretch. No more utility available. Kind of just has to oh, take the fight. Smart. But Jakey going to win that one in the cyber cage. And uh, okay. Yeah, the defuse is going to come through here. I was questioning it as it was getting a little bit close there. But Lancer Gaming going to be able to pick up that first round. Shy of two seconds the difference there. Overall, it would have been about four or five seconds, but good usage of utility there. Cyber cages are usually pre placed for the defensive side, but using them for retakes to cut off lines of sight, basically using it as a smoke and an audible smoke as well, because as soon as you encroach past the exit of that cyber cage, it actually makes a sound cue. It, not only for yourself, but actually for the opposing team. Oh, not, nice however, if the cyber cage is your that team, so bad. you can still walk through it if your own cipher throws it. And it worked out perfectly for Lancers. On that retake, re they turn it into a round victory. They win the pistol. Look at this. Moosey going to come in with a rifle on this round. Okay. Already zero point tossed out there. Doesn't get any information. The Condors. They're making their way slowly over to this B site. Encroaching, though, is Lancer Gaming. They pushed out pretty far out of that A, but not able to find anyone just quite yet. This is going to be a little bit easier for them to make their way onto B, but they have to be careful of the Cypher utility, specifically the couple of trap wires, as well as the camera. Prowler going to activate the trap wire, and uh, just like that, good fragments just stall things out. Patience here for Lancer on the defensive side as well. Unique wanting to walk forward, but Jakey towards the tower side finds a double off the back of it. Looking for a third, we'll find that as well before they're taken care of. Unique only finding body shots, and Silly actually turns it to a double of their own. The problem is they're being flanked even while Clone was tailwinding. They cannot find the kill, and Kip is in a one versus three. They have a Sheriff, but all that is left for them is utility alongside that Sheriff. They may be able to recover the Spectre, but they'd actually end up being caught out unless... A very fortuitous smoke is put at their feet. That could work out fairly well for them, but timing, I believe they've been seen. And Kip also has to move forwards here, spots him out, gets quite a bit of damage in, tries to go for the headshot, but Luke N with the spray down, more than happy to be able to claim up that kill. It's a little bit messy, but the Lancers do come out on top. And uh, yeah, once again, Jakey just so good on this lurk, but I have to question the Cypher pick a little bit. We saw how easy it was for that trip to just get dismantled immediately, thanks to a little bit of a Prowler that just kind of flew through. And so this is something that they're going to have to be a little bit more creative about how these trips get set up. Otherwise, they could just get popped right off the bat and not too much information given. I feel like it's a similar situation. With Null in that same conversation, tripwires for Chamber, who again really isn't a Sentinel, just happens to have a tripwire. Don't care what anybody says. Killjoy, the alarm bot, similar conversation really across the board. Conestoga does have rifles this time around, though. The anti bonus for them hopefully works out in their favor. Highway put forward, Ooh. but Clone is caught out in the middle of it. Stretch a nice kill across, keeps not only weapon advantage, but man advantage now for Conestoga as they open things up fairly well and with a spike plant. A spike goes down, 4v5 onto the sweet take. Lancer are getting themselves nice and set up. Be only one suppression inbound. So they're gonna have to go fast. Really smart good of the molly. At least force things out alongside the aftershock, but it just falls a little bit shy. Also able to get one, but not up top, ready to get another kip. Just on the other side as well. Pressure now coming in from both of these sides, and it's gonna be a nice little crossfire. Pinching in as the Condors are able to take their first round and keep four members alive during their troubles. Clean double swing as well, making sure that they keep as many players alive as possible. That Molotov, if it goes maybe an extra meter or so lower and is able to land properly, you turn that into a round victory. But, yeah. so close, yet so far, there for the Lancer retake. They are still in a fairly healthy position. Pistol and conversion round goes their way instead of Conestoga's, as it did in the first and second half back on Ascent. That's 
to check out for them. And now in a full rifle round, it's guns across the board and weapons of choice as Clone is bringing in an operator. Keep an eye on them for some aggression. The problem is nobody's really swinging over towards the backside of Arcade. Well, potentially a Killjoy. That'd be kind of nice to at least get that first kill. <laughs> you know Kip is just aware of it, waiting. Oh, yeah, spots out there, but an unconventional miss from Clone. Now, look at this. Conestoga Condors, they start making their way around. Gonna, gonna try and put a little bit more pressure on this arcade, as well as a tower. But no one's gonna be up there at all. Smoke's getting tossed down. The fast lane gonna get activated to cut off sight. But it is gonna be a camera that finds quite a bit of information. The haunt gets shot out. And now the engagement is gonna be there. Clone just had the pistol out at the wrong time. Can't quite find a kill. And the condors are on the site looking at there. Jakey going down first. Now it should be a nice easy plant. Plant will be easy. The retake may be even easier though, as the retake is from multiple different avenues of attack. Most importantly, that B main position. Oh. Fragment well used will turn into a kill as Nan will be dropped, but Unique is now left alone in a 1 versus 3. Flash drive through, Silly Shadow seen around towards main, looking to swing with possibly some help from sight, and that's Kip looking to do so. It's Kip just to find the kill on their own. And Conestoga, similar to that of Lancer, back on ascent, will lose the first two rounds, but immediately respond with two of their own and tie us right back up into a piece. Yeah, great stuff coming out from the Condors on that round. Uh, I, I love the just aggression going through, and honestly, that rotation through Arcade to put more pressure onto Tower, that's such a smart thing to do, because then it allows for that double swing to go onto Tower just in case someone is there. But regardless, you get Tower for free. And once you get Tower for free, it's a lot easier to make your way onto site, and you can tell that Jakey was just panicking. Once again, those trap wires not finding as much value, but honestly, these, the camera is getting quite a bit of info. If we did get to see Clone get a bit of those picks, I think that round could have gone completely different, but Non gets shut down. No more overdrive for you, as Luke uses that stinger, and Jakey just on the other side, a clean headshot from that Sheriff. Okay, Lancer's giving me some PTSD to when they lost the bonus, but we're still able to turn it into a round victory with just some pistols. Similar to that of the second half of Ascent, we may see a similar situation here. That smoke is not long, and Unique may very well just push straight through it. I wouldn't blame them for doing so. Tower control now taken, fully so, as Clone is dropped, but there's the aggression from Unique, seeing both low players, and an orbital strike on the site will force Stretch out of position, costing them their lives. Silly Shadow, however, onto a 3k, is shot what? down at that exact same position, but it's down to a 2 versus 1. The spike is rotating all the way over towards A. There's been no sound cue whatsoever, so J-Man will A, have a free spike plant, B, still have a decent bit of utility left over, and most importantly, C, have some some time between a spike plant and the engagement coming through from Lancer. Yeah, the haunt comes back online, but at this point you have to use that haunt and kind of swing off of it and secure at least one kill to isolate a 1v1. Not an ideal scenario, but to be fair, that got a lot of utility out of Lancer Gaming. As you saw, the fault line got tossed out just as J-Man started to run around, meaning they're not going to have that fault line available when they make their way back onto this A site. Time is ticking down, and they are going to be making their way through satellite. Playing together, that's the most important part of that about this. J-Man, most importantly with that C's as well. Haunt sure to gain information, but C's to deafen your opponents and drop some HP for them. J-Man now being seen though, Spotted. the double swing can certainly be there. The C's, even if it's put forward, does not do enough damage to find a kill in and of itself. Mousy gets it to half, but Unique is able to find the kill off the back of their teammate swing, forcing J-Man out in the open and turning around victory here for Lancer. I, I swear I have deja vu. They can't win around where they have full rifles, but you know, give them pistols and they're walking away with victory every day of the week. It's kind of insane, and you know what? People hate on the stinger quite a bit, but there's there's a couple of situations where that stinger is going to be coming out on top, and it does help, especially when that neon is kind of just flying at you. But the stinger's coming out elite, of course, Jakey being able to find a headshot as well. It's this weird level of aggression from Lancer when they're on those save rounds that just completely catch the Condors off guard, and that's why they're able to convert these rounds over in their favor. Uh, on top of that, too, a couple ultimates tossed in once they realized it was winnable, but okay. Condors, going for a very fast tower side hit. Smoke's already down. They want to just completely take this site by storm, but Nine is already down. Multidimensional take here for Conestoga, both from main and arcade, and they've gained site control. The problem is they've lost what man advantage could have been there. And there is ultimates available here for the defensive side. One, most importantly, is that Rolling Thunder, but for themselves, they have the Nightfall, of which is now being used, and the Orbital Strike for a possible post-plant position. The retake now in from arcade. A double swing from that main box, but Luke able to turn it into a double kill of their own. And now a four versus two for this Lancer retake. Almost the best possible position for them to be 
Champion. No more ultimate available. The Nightfall already being used and smokes on top of the bomb, of which oh. will not be able to be shot away. No possible round victory here, even with a haunt over top. They cannot find enough kills through the smoke, in enough time to turn it into a round victory, and adding insult to injury, J-Man dies as the round concludes. Lancer, a near perfect retake from multiple sides of the map. Yeah, and the fact that Luke is able to scoop up those two kills is huge. I mean, you mentioned it during the round as well. You know, you want to have that orbital strike available just in case things go wrong. And considering how close that spike was getting, I think that orbital strike could have made a little bit of a difference, but just not enough. And so the Condors fall flat yet again. Lancer Gaming coming out on top four to two. And on top of that too, a lot of ultimates coming in here. Stretch only able to afford a Sheriff coming in. And it's going to be a fault line to slow down this push. Already the Stimpak gets used, but Luke just goes for the swing and Kip is already down. It's not looking good as it is yet a weird buy coming in from uh, the Condors. It doesn't look like they necessarily have enough to be able to bring full weaponry this round. Jakey's in such a good position. J-Man walks straight through the smoke and most importantly is caught with the spike being dropped. Neural theft being put forward as well, gaining any information possible. And a swing oh. from Luke N turns into at least one kill, but it's still a three for two overall in the round. Clone with a flank actually turns into a victory on at least that fight alone, playing around their own cloud Ooh. burst. Stretch is able to find a return and still has the spike in their control. <laughs> Another post plant position possibly here for Stretch. Yeah, look at this. Oh, I was about to say, we're getting a little bit of deja vu, except this time because the Cypher is alive. The they're going to have that information exactly. That camera spotting out B and not seeing anything. And now they must know that Stretch is going to be coming around, especially too with KO watching the site as well. Once again, they just got to stick together. And as long as they stick together, then they should be able to win this one out. Rolling Thunder is still available, but unless Stretch has that information, it's not necessarily going to be used most effectively. Unique head angle across. Oh, caught. They've been seen. Stretch the information enough and possibly a Null Command, just to make sure that this round is indeed a moot point. Null Command actually not being used. Fragment possibility, or a flash drive to set up this fight. Stretch's fault line will miss. A Cypher Cage drop right in front of this drop to make sure that no information can be given over. A first kill for Stretch, but that's all they'll find. Scary possib possibility for Jake, as the spray transfer could have been there, but luckily for them, was not. And Lancer went a fifth straight. Yeah, if that cyber cage went down just a second earlier, I think that could have been a completely different story. It felt like one of those situations where it just dropped and it was like, uh-oh, you can see me now. And it was a little bit of panic, but thankfully, Jakey able to clean up that kill to get a nice replay on this chaos that kind of went through there. But honestly, Jakey just doing a wonderful job of being able to hold things down. You can tell that the Condors just really wanted to take it over that complete spawn position to get them, you know, force their opponents into a weird spot where they could execute that pincer mechanic and be able to take them out. Fortunately, the Condor is not able to find that just quite yet, but let's see how it goes. There's gonna be a lot of stingers coming through here. Kip with the hero rifle, while uh, Lancer, well, they've got four ultimates coming into this next one. And uh, if they do win this one, then Conestoga, well, it's not gonna be looking too good for them. No, but luckily enough, Conestoga, with the limited utility that they brought to this round, have actually already taken full sight control, so Lancer Gaming is forced into an almost entire retake. Spike plant into his default is actually denied in an orbital strike follow-up, but J-Man can still get that spike down. The orbital strike doesn't extend all the way to the corner, and they're able to get the spike plant off the back of it. Silly Shadow taken care of. The first kill goes the way of Lancer Gaming, and they at least have that man advantage to play off the back of. Kip is dropped, however, so that man advantage now nullified. A null command, speaking of which, is put forward and forces stretch out in the open on the back side Ooh. of that fragment as well. Jakey finds a 3k, but that's all they'll walk away from this round with, and Luke caught off. Lancer Gaming torn apart. Clean round victory for Conestoga in what should have been a thrifty round, but apparently Riot.exe disagrees. The Stinger strike again, but I, I think that that was one, a little bit of overconfidence coming in from Lancer Gaming onto that one. Uh, yep. Obviously, we talked about the fact that they had all these ultimates coming into there. And would you take a look at that? They invested three of them onto that round, just expecting that they could win it. And unfortunately, when you just kind of assume that the round is going to be over before it actually goes, that's when these tricky positions with Stingers can really come and bite you in the butt. And so the Condor is more than happy to be able to capitalize off of some of those mistakes. Once again, the fact that they were able to stay alive live and still get the spike down in the middle of that orbital strike was absolutely massive. It was a wonderful idea coming in from Lancer, but unfortunately the execution just missed by a hair, but that was more than enough to allow the Condors to swoop away with that round. 
Lancer calling a timeout, trying to figure out what went wrong in that round. They will still have a buy, considering they won three straight. More than enough money for them. You can see the pings on the map. Take a quick look at the top left of your screen. There are three or four pings from the blue side, with two or three that just dissipated for red. Both teams are looking towards the A side and saying, hey, there are some weak points over here. Maybe we can remedy that as a possibility. So look for a possible all-out brawl on the A side of the map. You can see, especially with three players now going over towards Dish. This is the first time we've seen this setup from Conestoga. Not a single time have they have pushed Dish thus far in this game. If that changes now, I feel like they could catch off this Lancer defense. Lancers have a lot of sheriffs here. Bladestorm to kind of compensate for that. Non already making their way in. Ooh, gave him the slip. Luke able to escape there. Just barely, as now the smokes are going to be coming down. Gonna be counter smokes as well. Prowler fast lane. Gonna cut off vision completely. J Man in the chaos of it is able to find one, but look at that, it's completely traded back normally. Aftershock gets invested to at least keep them back, but already. This is kind of a crazy round coming in from Lancer Gaming. They evened out the stage. 3v3 as the spike goes down. One player towards Dish, one towards Main, and the final on the site itself. Neural Theft use, that's information gain, and they can push off the back of it. Reposition has to be there here from Conestoga, but they can't oh. afford to push anywhere else, especially with Clone's Bladestorm out like it is. Two updrafts still available. Stretch could be caught off guard, but is still at least able to find a single kill across onto Jakey, making this more of a possibility for Kip. They're playing around their own turret, of which we'll find some information, and with that spike plant being put towards default, a much better position for them to now be in. Clone caught off guard, very low HP, a well-placed breeze will catch them off, but more like Kip's rifle, Ooh. unfortunately, only on to one. Good refrag, Mousy turns it into a good round as Lancer will re-extend their lead to three. I'm I'm convinced that Lancer actually just loved the bargain bid. They're like, hey, we got enough money, forget about that. Uh, once again, we're seeing yet another thrifty round come out from this squad. Unbelievable stuff. In the chaos, they thrive. It is crazy that they were getting the trades with those sheriffs, despite the fact that a very clear weapon advantage was coming in from the Condors. And it's through all of these crazy smokes that it just gets traded back, allowing for them to be able to pick up the rifles, and then they just clean that one up. It was a good idea from Kip, but unfortunately just not enough, unless they invested the lockdown. But given the economic state, I wonder whether or not that lockdown investment would have been worth it, because we are seeing the Condors back onto a save, and uh, already quite a bit of utility being used, clone. Unaffected though, tosses out the smoke here, has to back off though, because a lot of information given through that haunt. Good haunt. On the back of a fault line, they'll just push straight forward. And a nightfall used as well. The problem is, as soon as that fast lane falls, so does both oh, Silly boy. and J Man. A double from Unique before they're taken care of. Low HP for Nan, they cannot afford to swing anything, especially with the spike down. It's a much better position oh, for this defensive side to be in. Lucan sees a shoulder and finds a head, because I suppose that's how Valorant works. And Nan is now left in a 1 versus 4, flashed off the angle, and triple swung. I'm no expert, but you're not winning that. Lancer, a clean retake of a site they barely even lost, and Conestoga is torn apart at the seams. Yeah, just unbelievable plays. Unique, though, coming up absolutely massive. Of course, weapon advantage there. They're able to find two and drop the spike, and on top of that, too, Luke and just with the awareness, somehow gamer mode engaged able to find that headshot right through there. and I'm gonna be honest with you the Condors invested the nightfall there I don't think that that was the round to do that given the fact that they were on that save you would much rather use that ultimate when you have rifles to make sure that you can continue to buy rifles and get your economy rolling but that's no longer going to be a tool a very early orbital strike tossed in onto B tower that's more or less going to telegraph to the entire nation where they are going to be moving in and we can see Lancer Gaming getting ready to kind of respect that as a oh. little bit of a fight happening on the other side but Kip is going to go down first now Lancer Gaming are getting ready for their retake gotta feel so bad Kip was actually watching that you could see it with line of sights on the map but as soon as they turn away clones actually able to turn it to a kill and they turn it to a follow-up as well silly shadow taken care of that was out towards sewers and now j-man the last line of defense over towards the arcade side but not actually oh, double no. with him but jakey able to take j-man out of contention overdrive used but jakey finds a double and lancer gaming now with a tactical crouching making sure your crouch key works for mousy you gotta make sure you can crouch later on, should you require a good spray. Just yeah, we see the power of the drop shot, you know? You just yeah. go down, they, they miss, and you get the kill. That's the only reason why you would do something like that. Only but. reason. 
Yeah, it's the only reason, but it was just so fast coming in from Lancer Gaming. And really, they don't really give the Condors a chance to breathe as soon as the spike goes down. Usually we see a little bit of rotation, and that's when, okay, the, now the attackers are going to get themselves set up on a post plant, and then finally we're going to see the engagement coming through, and it's just like a clean engagement, like very by the books. But Lancer Gaming are just kind of moving so quickly through it. And the fact that they can set up their post plant uh, before... Conestoga condors get themselves into a comfortable position is the reason why they're able to just kind of move in with all the might and fury because the condors just kind of have to take cover wherever they are and hope for the best while Lancer Gaming are more than happy to just kind of storm the site so it's been very clean from them but let's see if this time they can make it that 9-3 or if they're going to get stopped again at 8-4 given the fact that the condors do take the time out I would expect to see that 8-4 scoreline. Don't count Lancer out just yet. They could sell all their weapons and buy sheriffs just to win the just to win the round. You never know. I'm kidding. I, I promise I'm kidding, but that would probably still work. See, you're kidding, but at the same time, yeah, if Lancer have work. sheriffs, it's just going to be great for them. Like, that's what I've learned. That's what, if the AI was learning based off of how all these rounds went, if it's thrifty, Lancer's going to win. As long as the game technically counts it as a thrifty win. <laughs> they, they come into the round spending too much, and the game's like, nah, it wouldn't be a thrifty round. They're like, oh, we don't want to win. It wouldn't be cool. So they don't. Lancer Gaming this time around, however, over-dedicate themselves towards the A side, or B side, sorry, and completely forego defending the other site, because, you know, who cares, right? Lancer Gaming's going to have to play retake. A full setup for main. Spike Double play. Nanosorm is on the spike. They have a bot there as well. Only one ultimate to use here for Lancer. Only one ultimate for Conestoga as well. How those two play around each other, that's the real question as Lancer retakes. Okay, Aftershock getting lined up. That's going to use that one this time. It is going to be an orbital strike coming in as well. Non going to be the only one on site. Clone just goes for the drive-by. A stretch gets taken down as well. Okay, now we're going to be seeing that Killjoy lockdown come in here. Clone has to win the duel. Doesn't quite find it yet, but Kip able to hold this one down. We are going to be seeing... It is going to be unique, forced back completely. The trail's still given as well, but not enough time. That lockdown might have just done it. Has to go up against it. Simply not enough time. Unique has to go for the swing, but it is going to be Kip walking away with it. Hey, what did I call, Dan? Uh, we are going to see the Condors at least take it to an 8-4 half. And you could see them winning that round off the bat as soon as you walked into it as well. Lancer Gaming just bought too much. They had too good of weaponry. They didn't want to win. <laughs> mostly a joke. But the, the proactivity versus reactivity conversation, Conestoga played proactive. They took the fights, they took the real estate, and then they played a little bit more passive. Understanding that while, yes, you can play reactive, if you have utility, activity in your favor. Whereas on the other side, not so much the case. Unfortunate finish there for Unique. They had the conversation of should I stay or should I go they chose to go and unfortunately it was straight to the shadow realm as that's a, that and an early grave is all they were sent to all right now that these sides have swapped around very curious to see how this is going to play out here I mean given the fact that the condors have that neon they have to play a little bit more aggressively out of it and that's something that we saw that they struggled with last time around kip gonna get caught up into it only has a shorty suddenly can't use any of this utility spots them all out here but gets sprayed down j-man meanwhile able to take clone down at least only at 74 hp the spike now getting planted here luke and barely alive but now is going to be dropping these sky smokes down it is going to be silly shadow at least finding one luke goes for the trade immediately here now, after shot gets contested into the back, able to actually find the loop. Jake now in the position there, gonna be swinging up, but now it's down to a 1v3. Jakey up against the world, looking for, able to slow them down for a second, but now the position is gonna be known. Oh. Make it one, make it two, oh. make it three, are you kidding me? The clutch comes through as Jakey wins the pistol round for Lancer Gaming. Right click, right click, left click to the face, because why the heck not for Jakey? The cypher clutch, the duelist you never thought you'd need, and Conestoga, that's a round they want back. Look at how many bullets are left over for Jakey in these fights. First shot, down to nine. Then down to six. Three. And then a right <laughs> click actually closes it out as That's well. That's unbelievable. Four right clicks, three kills, and the all-important headshot to close it out. And Lancer even calls a timeout because I think they just lost their minds in the VC. I'm no expert, but when your teammate does that in a pistol round, it's understandable to lose your mind. And because of it, Conestoga now 
could probably use the timeout a little bit more than them because they're thinking, how in the world did we lose that? And that's basically the advantage that Lancer needs. Both teams winning two pistols each. The problem for Conestoga is that they've lost back-to-back -back pistols on a map of, of their own selection. I can only imagine what the comms were like there. The amount of screaming. Discord would have muted it because they would have thought that it was just loud noises being flying through off of that one. Amazing play from Jakey. Take it away the top fragging roll from Luke and as well. But just classic kills. Goes for the Vandal Hero Rifle. You earned it, buddy. And now... Lancer Gaming get themselves set up yet again to make this double digits, and as soon as they get there, it's going to be tough for the Condors to be able to get back. Well, Lancer setting themselves up for success again. Double faceted push. Two, now three actually over towards Arcade. The other two around towards B Main. They are, however, pushing into a Killjoy and the more stacked of the two sides. It, but they have to go now. There's a flank kept setting through, and the longer they take, the higher likelihood that they could lose this round. Bucky in hand for Kip. They are caught off guard. Oh, only a headshot, and not with the right click, unfortunately. Clone will find a return headshot, and the one shot, one kill will come through. Flank is being set up as well, but Jakey, as soon as their tripwire is taken care of, so are Nod and J-Man. This is adding insult to injury, adding problems upon problems. And a 1v5 with a classic? Not gonna happen. Flawless conversion round for Lancer, exactly what they need to look to close out the series. Not gonna happen unless you're Jakey, but you can just tell Jakey's entered the flow state as well. So effective at the spray down, doesn't even give an opportunity to follow too, but quite frankly, Lancer Gaming, they're just, their ship is sailing right now at full speed, and they look really darn good. We're gonna be seeing Moosey actually have just a, a stinger coming into this next one, but it is gonna be the Condors, this is gonna be their full buy, but this is more or less evened out between these two teams, given the fact that Lancer Gaming, well, they mostly bought up rifles on that last one, that's how much they're feeling it. Conestoga needs to come back. This is the round in which they cannot afford to lose. They lose here, they're looking at a save round and basically guaranteeing themselves having to face up against map point. Flank from behind, not worried about the dish side, costs non their life. But the spike has been dropped, a follow-up kill into Unique. Hold the phone. J-Man has found a double. They've dropped the spike as well, and they're now having support in through the door. A triple kill now required of Clone. They find a first, almost a second, but they are shut down off the back of it. Mousy looking for a refrag of their own. I believe that's from behind, and Kip is taken care of because of it. A refrag from Lucan as well. It's J-Man with 15 HP and a 1 versus 2. Vandal out their position, guaranteeingly known, and the swing off the back of an Aftershock, trying to use it as a flashbang, turns into a kill and a round for Lancer, but only barely. Unfortunately... Only barely is enough. Yeah, uh, honestly, great just patience coming in through J-Man. Being able to hold that one down, good decision making on an individual basis as well from Luke. And go through that aftershock and, yeah, like you said, use the aftershock a little bit like a smoke, maybe a flash even, and see if you can find something there. But we are going to be seeing the Condors take another time out this time around. Uh, Lancer, meanwhile, well, hey, they've got that neural theft online. When Jinky's fragging as hard as he is, then uh, you can expect that one to be coming through. But they're only two rounds away from winning out their Ontario nemesis and being able to take the lead over them, which could do quite a bit for their standings at the end of the season. For some context, a uh, massive thank you to Patrick or Pachizzi, one of the admins here in the NECC. We've been given the match caveats as to what this means. Quote, both of these teams are locked into playoffs with three wins. The top eight in each conference qualify for their oh. own conference playoffs, by the way, for some context. But... This match is most important for seeding, as the winner of this will avoid having to play the number one seeded St. Clair Saints. Yeah. And just to add even more context, both of these teams have indeed played St. Clair. Lancer, when they did so, lost 4-13, 4-13 in an 0-2 matchup. On the other side, Conestoga lost 7-13, 3-13. So, 0-2s for both of the squads. Almost a guaranteed first round exit if you have to take on the Saints here in the playoffs. Yeah, and I might be mistaken here, but I do believe that the Saints won the Red Bull Campus Clutch Canada yes. edition last year. And uh, they looked very clean in the finals as well. Had the privilege of working that event, and that's a team you really want to avoid uh, if you want to make it deep into the bracket. At least get a little bit more practice before you go up against that elite squad. Now, a little bit of a slower hit coming from Lancer Gaming. They're able to pick up that ultimate orb as well, get the orbital strike online, take the rope. 
I always got to be a little bit careful. Thankfully, the buddy is going to be watching that just in case disaster does strike. The Conestoga Condor is really just slowing down the pace of gameplay as well. They were originally pushing out, but have just decided to hold it back. And the already clone has to expend that Tailwind. And uh, yeah, it's going to be just a couple of Guardian shots that are going to be more than enough of a deterrent to push him away from me. That up here for Conestoga has to be perfect, and the problem is they fully relinquish B control. Kip forced off the angle, the smoke does not give them full vision, and the flash will push them away. Post plant almost oh? a guarantee, but Unique instead will go left. over towards the default plant position. Re-engages here. Oh Nightfall does not, however, land onto Mousy, so a good enough exactly kill across right. will turn it into a 4v2 and a neural theft just to make sure that Conestoga's clutch potential is near impossible as Unique plays off information. Oh, a flash no. around the corner into a possible <laughs> final kill, but it doesn't come through. Overdrive now used for Non turns into a follow-up, an ace clutch possibility. They'll switch back to the Phantom, knows at least one is around towards the main position, but does not clear the place of which they came from, Clone will shut them down, and Lancer have eight match consecutive point. match points to close out this series and fracture as a whole. Yeah, and that, just towards the ender, that was so smart coming in from the attackers in their post plant. You know what? Just use the jet, send the jet in, see if you can find that kill. Worst was worst, you got the orbital strike to stall for a little bit more time, so there were contingencies upon contingencies ready to go for Lancer Gaming, and now they do find themselves in match point, and the Condor's in a very awkward buy. They were anticipating winning that round, they kind of half bought there, but as a result, their economy not looking great. They might not have full utility to move into this next one, but okay, already, a trade happening at the start and that given the fact that the spike goes down that's really good information for the condors but look at this it's a little messy on site moosey able to at least find non another trade coming through 3v3 uh orbital strike online for the condors but could be met with that null command from lancer gaming i think that the null command could really help them at least get that spike down where do they go they basically have full b control if they want it that's a guarantee the problem is they Honestly, don't want it. Seems like A is the call at this point, but not a guarantee by any means. The Killjoy, of course, rotating over. And the question currently sits for Conestoga, can you tear apart this defensive setup? The answer, maybe, but you'd have to do so now over towards B. Is time's not really running out. They still have more than enough of it, considering the earlier round chaos. But it'll be a post-plant scenario, assuming they go now, because they have tower control, they have main control. The only thing they have to clear is CT. Null command could be activated here. We've been able to catch those people in the back. Unique is now going to be able to get that spike down. Great read by Lancer as well. They're just kind of slow in their pace. Oh, no, KP! Sorry, Kip! Able to find Unique with the classic. Doesn't really have that judge in hand, but Null command's still going to be activated, slowing things down, finally. Sky smokes are going to be coming down. Orbital strike could be invested as well to clear out tower. Silly Shadow though, able to find Moosey. Makes it this 2v2 scenario. It's down to a 1v1 more or less. Jakey going in. Sorry, 1v2. Looking for it. Here's the spike defuse come through. Not able to find the kill necessarily, but goes through the spray. Go able to find J-Man through the chaos of it. Oh my but Silly Shadow able to win that one out. Skin of their teeth, the Condors. They keep on flying through things. They get at least one more round on the board, but they still need seven before they can go through. The early round chaos pays off for Conestoga, and most importantly, the retake goes their way as well. So close for Lancer to close things out, and honestly, thought they were going to pick it up as well. Jakey playing around the double cypher cage. Looks like a Venn diagram over there, similar to the Nanoswords we saw back on the Ascent. And surprisingly, even finding the kill onto J-Man through the smoke. They weren't even defusing. They were just casually strafing in front. Just didn't work for them. And off the back of it, Conestoga at least bring one round back and force a little bit of a save here for Lancer, but they still have a Bladestorm and most of an economy off the back of it. They're now looking to go just straight onto A, and there's really lack of a defense here. They could very well just turn it into a spike plant. <laughs> and I think they're going to do just that. Going to hear the Molly just hot on the ground as well, but look at this, Jakey on the flank here. J-Man not aware. Crosshair placement not going to be good enough. And just like that, Spike should be going down pretty quick. Unique going to get that I down. Jakey that also able to find another. Feet. It's not where you want to go. Neural Theft now going to be activated as well. Rolling Thunder going to be coming through. But look at that. They just find the kills. And now it's all up to Kip. Position is going to be known. Clone <laughs> with the Blade Storm cleans that one up. Lancer Gaming, they make their opponent's map pick look even better than their own. Winning it out 2-0 to zero up against the Conestoga Condors. 
Jakey's just so clean with it. Clone as well. The entirety of Lancer looks so much better in this final map. And honestly, it came down to a combination of, well, three separate things. A, mechanics. Obviously, gun skill and a tactical first-person shooter important to close out rounds, and most importantly, some of those clutch positions, i.e. Jakey in a 1v3 with a pistol, because, you know, again, why not? B, utility usage. We saw Jakey specifically, because I'm going to continue to sing his praise <laughs> until he stops being amazing at the game, playing around not only their own utility in pistol rounds, i.e. round number one that we barely saw, but we saw a pretty clean play around the, that cyber cage, but most importantly, setting themselves up for some of those fights, putting themselves in advantageous positions before they take the fight rather than having to recover from already lost possibilities later on and then obviously refrags as well even if you lose a fight somebody's there for a refrag clone towards that tower dropping kip even in a possible clutch situation a lot of things going up against conestoga this time around and lancers just made sure all those problems mounted and mounted and mounted until the pressure just crumbled them down yes Big congratulations to Lancer. They're going to be avoiding the Saints, the St. Clair Saints, potentially in the bracket. They, that Hey, that's a dub. You're able to get a little bit further. I don't, I don't want to call anything. I don't know how that one's going to shake down. Yeah. But So a very scary opponent to go up against. And just like that, they're going to win 2-0 over the Conestoga Condors. Now, we do have a couple more games after this one. So make sure not to go anywhere. Unfortunately, we're going to be leaving my home of Canada, Ontario specifically. But we have more Valorant coming up on the hour so don't go anywhere we'll have a bit of a longer break but when we get back we're gonna have more valorant so you're gonna want to stick around for that we'll see you on the other side of this break
Welcome back everyone to the NECC highlighted with your host Orbital. We've had an amazing week of games here with week number eight as teams are winding down from the regular season. With one more week to go, they're putting their all into these final matches. Without further ado, let's get started with the highlights. Uh, Jet instead of the race, it's going to be really good for him. Oh, Milky spotted out, but look at that. Good. Cr no way you don't find that kill. Oh, no. Milky Doo Doo not able to secure that one, and that's going to be a little bit of a stinger. The timing here could be immaculate. Goes in, is able oh! to at least get two, but look at this. The team has his back. It is going to be half of the team gone. As Blazer will oh. still stay alive. All the pain shells. Could have created a big problem, but. Pressure will mean no more utility. They just gotta take the fight and Blazer with the clutch. Stern warning. The way of Clark Red invented the Scorpion able to fire back, finding it all, but the lockdown is gonna be more than enough to push you Ottawa out of here. Oh. Trapped in a position. Mr. Raccoon has a high sight line. You're staring oh at a wall. The computers God. are really cool looking, but three players are detained. They're now just coming out of their lockdown. Scorpion has to be able to win it by themselves in a 1v3, but that's just not gonna happen. Out the jump in. Coming in, it's a J Razor versus Murray. Murray has been on fire so far. He doesn't ch plan on changing that anytime soon. Gets off the plant. No, he does. No, he's able to swing. Oh. J Razor is able to shut it down. Swing a more and more dangerous situation. Lockdown is coming to swing. He looks out. He's swinging pre firing. J Razor is able to equalize, actually, as he's looking to make something happen. There's the tag on the J Razor. He comes again. He's swinging out. He's going to actually. Be able to. Oh my god, Robo's gonna be able to get him! But Gangsta is able to do it, and does he have time? He doesn't! And that that ramification, that coordination that they have been able to pull out so far, Assumption just working so well, goes on kiting Skullzy as Ho Ho is trying to approach them. They have to flash away, but it doesn't stop the stun into another stun into Glacial Prison. They turn into Magana, still dealing a quite a lot of damage, but they're gonna try to run as fast as they can. Skullzy chasing them. What are they oh. gonna do? Gets the stun, hops. And they are looking to be safe on this one. Wow. <laughs> By nightfall, their huge buster shot to keep Big Tata away. But it doesn't Ooh. matter. He says this drag is mine. And this might be the turnaround that they're looking for. They pick up two kills. That's a nice shutdown front line here. If I look for a little bit of poke. Optimally, they want to get rid of the crown off of Sketchy Pepperoni, but they're going to opt for Oxen oh. first. The final spark comes through. Huge Cataclysm comes down. And it's free pickings right now. And now, oh my god, Landing. Oh, doing a lot of damage. They find the roots, Ooh, not enough baby. though. Oxen over the wall with the cease. Very smart so that they can take a little bit of space. Oh, Ooh. and the bear is gonna fall. What a shot from Ghoul. Now needing to find the head on Dr. Tumult. Not gonna find it quite yet. The res will come out, but is it gonna be fast enough, Chef Billy? Wait. Because the University of Rio Grande is all but taking point. There's a barrage coming through, but Ghoul gonna find a kill with the Dragon Strike. Um. They're still lightning with the with the sound barrier. There's so oh. much uh, insurance. The shatter was still online. Yeah, you can touch on Doomfist Gore, but it's not gonna do anything. Primal Rage, nothing else close. Oh no, there's no way you would have pulled this out. It was 120 to zero. Shinji has got the kill. The sound barrier is there. And the University of Nebraska are on top and moments away from one of the biggest comebacks I have ever seen on push. Red is gonna get melted. Cairo falls. The attack visor, both supports down. No the way. UNO Black will not allow the reverse sweep. They will not even allow a map five. They bring Tim Smith the entire way back in just under two minutes. Is a little bit of boost in the tank as it, for good measure. Gets the hundred boost in the corner. Does oh, everything in his power to set it up. Bring this home. Looking good for them. Durham Laws might have to find a bit of desperation. Oh, oh. show longer's at a boost and had to just get a touch off the back wall which will give it up to knots up for this raw he's beat the last defender it'll float in now with all those amazing moments there comes some funnier ones as well with some players missing the mark or just having a little bit of fun here are this week's misclicks power here but not really too much help on the back of it because guess what any ghost could basically two shot at this point and amazon could even grab a kill there with the turret anyone will come out up out into oh. main a and everyone just first infernal to assumption 
it's gonna be an assumption soul. Oh, an assumption soul. It's gonna be an inferno soul. It's gonna be a one trade kill. Come back online. Oxen's coming. Sketchy pepperoni is coming. Ooh. They're trying to find him. He's flying far. He's flying fast. But Oxen hopping over the walls like an Olympic D1 gymnast. He does not <laughs> care. But Doc McStuff is with a move and Sketchy pepperoni. And with that, we round up week number eight. There's one more week of regular games, so let's make sure to tune in for those as well as teams are on the line for playoffs. Thank you so much for tuning in to the NECC Highlighted.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. It's still the NECC Valorant, but now we're moving over to the Pacific Division. My name is Marks. This is Time to Light, and uh, how you doing this evening? I'm excited. I, I'm also excited for a completely separate reason, other than at least specifically NECC Valorant. We have NECC and Collegiate Valorant Hub. The Cherry Cup has just been announced. So if you want to join the NECC Discord, go take a look at the announcements tab. The TLDR about it is that it's a Valorant event for Collegiate players of marginalized genders and it will be raising money for both the trevor project a crisis service for lgbtq plus youth and it'll be taking place on april 15th and 16th just before playoffs start across the necc nice little introductory into playoffs and an amazing tournament to support an awesome place yeah the trevor project does amazing work just to make sure you know that they're supporting the marginalized genders just because well the world is kind of a bit of a scary place especially with a lot of things that are kind of going on but awesome stuff and 100 percent this is going to be a tournament that you're going to want to keep your eye on because i imagine that we're going to be seeing quite a bit of good valorant as well so hey once again go check the necc discord and you can see all the information there in the announcements tab but let's take a look at the match that we have in front of us right now it is the msoe so Raiders up against the Colorado Mavs, and uh, I, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Yeah, our two schools will first take a look over at the rosters to give you a real introduction to the new squads. We'll take a look at the Milwaukee School of Engineering Raiders. Keru Hinoptin W <laughs> or Dub One, the VV One, Hi is Dub One <laughs> or Hypno. Yeah, Hi No. Ah, sorry. that's Hi No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sacred, Exia, and Jay Dizzle on the board for Milwaukee. Yeah, it's honestly, right now, this is going to be the team that you want to take a look at. So far, the Raiders have got a 6-2 track record. And if we move over to the Colorado Mavs, uh, we can see kind of what we're doing on this side over here. They were going 4-4 into this one. But we're going to have a shared superior neck size, Pink Ranger, Shady, and Harpsicus coming in for this squad. Colorado actually played either last week or two weeks ago. I believe it was last week. I casted that one with Mick, and they did show up. It could have been a little bit of a better showing for them, but they still showed out as well. They played up against, as I'm totally not looking back at our schedule. I don't know what you're talking about. They played against Northern Arizona University, Junior, Junior University. That, that actually was a pretty good game, if I recall correctly. But a, a conversation away from that and a conversation into this match specifically, I, I have to say I'm excited to see Colorado Mesa play again. They looked really good last week. I'd like to see a little bit more team cohesion, but overall, healthy showing from them from what I can remember. Yeah, and once again, since this is like we're, we're pretty much on week nine, so this is basically the end of the season, uh, it, this is when those points start to matter. And honestly, as we get closer and closer to the playoff brackets, that's going to be, you know, this is when we see these teams in their top form. They've had the entire time to figure out what's working, what's not working, and this is when you really put your head down into the mud and see what you can kind of pull off. But we do actually have the map picks and bands ready for this specific match. As you know, it is a lovely little best of three, but if we fly over to our map picks, then, well, we're going to be starting things out onto Ascent. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting the head shake that we don't have those maps open. <laughs> maps, map, map picks and bands are not functioning for some reason. Yeah. The sheet is still broken. So we do actually have the audible map picks and bands for you. <laughs> to start things off, uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering chose Ascent. Colorado Mesa chose Lotus. And then Split was left over. Colorado will start on the defensive side for both of the first two maps while they are left to the attack on Split is our third. And quite frankly, I'm very interested in this Lotus pick. Uh, obviously, when we look at a bunch of these different maps and kind of what's in the popular zeitgeist, we talked a little bit about Fracture before. I feel like Icebox has really just kind of walked its way out ever since the late changes. And uh, quite frankly, I would imagine that Haven would have been the map pick, but Lotus is going to throw a curveball into the match. But regardless, let's focus on map number one. We've got Ascent coming at you, and uh, we're already getting teased with some of these compositions. 
I like the comp at least set up here for Colorado Mesa. Harpsicus setting in the Astra and a Sage coming through for Pink Ranger. For a, a comparison, we just saw a Killjoy and Omen played as the Sentinel and Controller roles respectively. Pink Ranger, however, last week was a very good Sage. So by no means am I counting them out of this. It's just a, an awkward pick that I'm not sure if Milwaukee will be too prepared for. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, okay, for a second there, we saw a shared uh, eye in that cha chamber, but at this point, I don't think that that is necessarily going to be the case. Pink Ranger going to be locking in onto that Sage. Uh, this this is going to be an interesting one, depending on whether or not this, these are the picks that we are getting teased up here. Going for that double Sentinel says that they're really looking for a lot more controls, but the flashes are going to be my biggest concern uh, if Milwaukee uh, do pick that. Agent. Sorry. Colorado if they do decide to go for that pick. Seems like they will. Uh, Shared also looking to now lock in the Killjoy. And a double Sentinel composition on a scent. Not something you usually see. It's usually double Initiator, but hey, you do you. Maybe not needing the extra Initiator Sova maybe being enough. I, however, am a fan of the KO Sova combination. I feel it's healthy for an attacking squad. When you're starting off on the defensive side, maybe not as much. If you think you're going to do very well on the defensive side, you're going to have a Sage. It's just going to elevate your play. But retakes may very well end up being a problem here for Colorado Mesa. That's something they do have to worry about. Yeah, and uh, quite frankly, I, I don't think that this is necessarily the move. While the Barrier Orb does help quite a bit, especially too with Sage, to lock down a lot of these areas, I don't think that Ascent really is necessarily the one you want to be going for. Uh, you're using that Barrier Orb instead of bringing stuff like Molly's Flashes. I I'm not too sure that this composition is going to lend itself well, but who knows? Colorado Mavs, maybe they've got something cooked up and they're excited to show all of us, but I right now I can't make a good read as to how this composition is going to play out. There's only one way to find out as we head into our first map. Ascent, our first map here. I'm still very excited to see Ascent again, mainly because it's a great equalizer. When you introduce yourself into a series between two teams that haven't played each other either before or in a specific season, it's a conversation where you say, this could be a very close matchup, and Ascent would really illustrate at least the start of that matchup. I'd like to see how Colorado Mesa comes out of the game on the defensive side. I'm not sure how I feel about Blit, but, I mean, Jed over towards A, thing, and you're playing Sova, Killjoy over towards B, because you have that Sage, that's when you have a little bit better option. Alright, well, the Mavs are going to be starting out on defense. Already looking to push a little bit more aggressively out here. Actually using that slow orb really just allow for a lot more space going through but that's a lot of information given just by that zero point and already the raiders they decide no nope, we're good actually we're just going to take a lot of mid space and the killjoy alarm bot should be able to at least catch this rotation going through but it's going to be hard for the maps to hold this one still oh they go back away and will immediately have their head removed from the rest of their body shady now in a two to one versus five and oh no that's not the greatest of situations for them to be in Hanabdin dropping away, Sacred Exia shrouded step straight into Pink Ranger, so they're taken care of. A 3v4 retake, oh. hold the foe, now a 2v3. That healing orb helps Pink Ranger a little bit, but they still have to be able to retake here, and oh, Pink Ranger's team caught out by the point. And keep in mind too, the Sage heal doesn't unfortunately heal as much when you use it on yourself anymore. Can I have a Swarm Grenade just stall things out for a second? Pink Ranger making first contact, but Kiru comes in. Nice little headshot to close it out, Nexus. Just on the other side of the corner. Goes through the tailwind away. Nexus taking a look now, but it is going to be a flash grenade. Just hurled forwards, and it's going to be nice and easy. W1 able to clean that one up as the Raiders get the first round. Opener goes away the attacking side. Important pistol round as Keiru looked really good with the Sheriff in hand. So good, in fact, they built up enough credits to buy a Vandal and full shields. Good start here for the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Colorado Mesa is still very much in this. Obviously, one round is not going to decide a map nor a series, but it can be a good jumping off point. And if you have a good start, you can have an even better finish. And hopefully now for the MSOE Raiders, that will be the case for them. But Colorado Mesa, there's a couple sheriffs. By no means are they safe here on the attacking side. Nice slow walk, making their way onto this A site. Meanwhile, the Mavs pushed out very aggressively. We're seeing that three-agent aggression. The Jet 
the Astra, as well as the Sage, and this time they've got a Silva just for good measure. This is a, almost an episode of Scooby-Doo with how fast this is going here, but the Raiders are going to get a free plant. Let's hope they're ready for this defense. High going to be the first one to make contact here. Does have a Vandal. Best case scenario, Armbot going to be down, but Jay Dizzle starts it out with a pick. Follow-up from Harpseekus, though. By no means is this round over. 4v4 with a retake split between Heaven and A-Main. The A-Main side having three of those four players. They have to be able to swing in towards Wine Cellar. Even if Pinoptin drops, it's still Keiru here for a double. Looking for a third over towards Heaven. is able to Tailwind away and looking for the fourth on towards Pink Ranger. Pink Ranger will shut away that rifle. They will walk straight into their demise as Dub1 will be able to shut them down. And the Raiders pick up the conversion round. Yeah, but the Raiders did lose quite a few of their members there. They're thankfully able to carry over those Vandals into this next one, but I think at this point they might need to force up as much as they can if they want to even stand a chance in this round. The Mavs are going to have more than enough economy to more or less buy themselves up. We are seeing a little bit of a half fly come through, a Spectre as well as a Guardian coming into this round. But still, I'm curious to see, are we still going to see those Mavs uh, continue to push out very aggressively at the start? They haven't gotten much, but if they just time it properly, they could come up big, which might be the gamble that helps this team win. But Bladestorm is going to be activated first for the Raiders, as uh, it's going to be a lot of information gained on mid. Aggression through mid as well, as the Raiders are wasting no time. Wall is up. I don't know if Pink Ranger's been seen. No, Keiru just looks up, removes Pink Ranger's head, and that's a great start here for the Raiders as they're looking to pick up this bonus. The Bladestorm out early so is a big pickup. Odd wall, annoying one as you mentioned, but certainly not one that's difficult to take care of. Superior Nexus on the backside, a triple, taken care of by Dub1 and Harpsechus, only able to find one before they fall. A 3v2 favors this Raider side, and a bonus round no less, promising positions for them to now be. Yeah, Raiders, really advantageous here. Zero point could be tossed out, should at least find a one. A couple of shock bolts being tossed onto the site as well, as the Raiders just set themselves up at the back there. And keep in mind, they have Paranoia, a couple of Swarm Grenades, as well as the KO hanging out. Uh, if that fragment wasn't utilized, they have a lot to kind of work off of in regards to just the stall. So they're not going to push their efforts, they're just going to play back and play it safe. Passivity now working for the Raiders as time is bleeding away from that spike. No matter how much utility you put on that spike, there's still three players that are going to swing you. Dub won the first, Sacred Exia yeah, the is. second, and Din going to close things out. Clean finish there for the Raiders. Keeping three players alive in a bonus round is a big pickup for them to start things off here on Ascent. <laughs> so unfortunate for the Pink Ranger. But uh, once again, good effort from the Mavs trying to keep things down. And honestly, they were contesting the site extremely well. But the Raiders just, just have enough left in the tank to be able to push that one forwards and then find that man advantage. On top of that, too, not dropping any of their players in that 3v2 scenario. Best case scenario for them at that point. And look at this. It's going to be a save coming in for the Mavs. Bucky Gaming coming in for sure. Let's see if this Bucky can find anything this round. I think the Raiders are just completely avoiding the B site. I believe the term goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Since the pistol round, they've basically exclusively gone towards the A side, so I suppose keep going with it. But fairly well-timed gravity well, but it doesn't find anything, so no extra information gained off the back of it. And at this point, Colorado Mesa, they're just on the wrong side of the map with no information gain whatsoever towards A. They could get a spike down. They could have a surdance on the A site, and Colorado Mesa would have absolutely no idea. Finally, they do, so... <laughs> At this point, the rotation will come through, but still a fairly easy and clean spike plan. Yeah, this is just like that spike weird planted. defense that we're seeing the Mavs do. They're investing so heavily to be able to get so much distance, but every single time it feels like they just gamble on the wrong side. Such a good positioning here. The crossfire is fantastic. A fragment comes through a little bit friendly. Not going to be the best, but Shared actually was able to get one with that Bucky for those of who are, are counting at home. Scared, just on the other side, catches the back of Shady. Now it's a 1v4 scenario, the Mavs looking good. Bucky Gaming coming in, Supreme one again. Scared goes down, as Shared is able to find one, and now picks up that Vandal just for good measure, but there's simply not enough time to make this one work. This is what we call a save. 
where Sherrod's going to run away, hopefully keep their weapon, because you cannot afford, if you're on the Colorado Mesa side, to continually give away A, free kills, B, free weaponry, and C, well, the combination of the two, I suppose. Sherrod will play passive and just wait over towards the bottom side of mid and keep their life very well intact. Colorado Mesa, however, has lost four straight rounds. Problems are mounting for them, not having real estate control, over committing towards one side of the map, and, well, Sacred Exia existing. A lot of things not going their way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. And I do think that this really comes down to just that lack of, of flashes to be able to make their way in onto the site. You can tell that every single time they try and go in and try and delay or anything, they don't have much. I mean, they've got a couple of Astra Smokes and literal physical barriers, but beyond that, unfortunately, it's not going great. Nexus has this operator, misses that first shot, gets spotted out by the Recon Dart as well. And uh, I think this is gonna be more than enough information for the Raiders to know how to approach the situation. He should be perfectly fine with it. But Superior Nexus here with the Operator, locking down a long line of sight. This should interrupt at least rotations here for the Raider side. If anything, it'll throw a spanner in the very efficient works of the Raider's attack, but they're still not too concerned about it, especially now considering the Operator has rotated over towards the tree side. So even less now, as the Owl Drone will clear out the entirety of mid. J Dizzle's aggression at this point should work out fairly well, and they've also cleared out the entirety of mid as well. This is a very good start for the Raiders. The problem is there's even more utility waiting for them on the B side. And I'm very interested to see how Shady's gonna be able to play this one out. Nexus, unfortunately, smoked off here. Has that operator. Okay, two smokes gonna be used. The cloud burst's good at at least allowing for position. Ooh, this is another shot. It's high. He's able to just get through, but Shady is aware that they're coming through there. An excellent headshot coming in from Gary, which just shuts down that operator. And now from the shadows, it's activated onto the safe site, because little do they know, but there's a le creepy little KO that was able to secure all that space. Spike planted. Shadows. Spike plant. 4v4 retake. Colorado, the only ultimate they have available is that cosmic divide certainly a viable one but remember pink ranger still looking to aggress and reminder they do still have that healing orb should it be required but nobody taking damage just yet not really requiring it as of right now dark cover fairly well timed as pink ranger is forced out of the site looking to possibly double swing as sheriff of the Leaf has seen sacred exia they swing around and are able to find a kill with help of keiru a double up towards heaven keiru able to get out they still have so much sight control two players waiting towards hell but keiru will just ace it themselves Teammates help, but they don't do everything for him. And Raiders find five, just as Keiru doesn't kill. I was about to say, Keiru, looking very clean with things. On top of that, too, starting things off, challenging that operator, able to find the headshot, and uh, honestly was just so clean with so many of these engagements. Obviously, yes, the team was good at at least baiting them out, making them look the other way, and then it's just simply is click in their head, but right now, Keiru leading the lobby, 13 kills, Blade Storm at the ready. That's a really good scoreline, considering there's only been five rounds. I think that's their second Blade Storm as well. They used the first one in round three. Oh yeah, kind of you're right. That, that's, that's a scary notion. Superior Nexus has a Blade Storm of their own. Shorty waiting inside of a dark cover that Sacred Exia threw out themselves. As soon as they walk through this, they should be taken care of, but no, Superior Nexus walks out the worst possible time, and the smoke drops. Superior Nexus, lucky to be alive at this point. Shorty finds two, at least one, two shots. The Blades are looking for the second. They cannot find the kill. The Healing Orb comes through, and Shady's actually able to find the kill off the back of it. Dub one at least finds one, but that's all they will find. They walk straight into a nasty crossfire on the A site, and they're torn apart. An opt-in, now in a one versus three, now turn two. The resurrection's available for Pink Ranger if they can find an opportunity to get it. Sagewell is up, and there's a free res. An opt-in right back into the 1v3, even though they found that first kill. Spike's still not down. In such a hard position as well. An opt-in has to make this one work. Walking forwards, spots out one, able to at least find Pink Ranger here, but Nexus now has his number high, not able to find that one as well. Suddenly it's down to a 1v1, KJ on KJ. Spike still not down, Hynopton doing their best to clear all of their covers. Position is gonna be known, but not expecting it in heaven. Sherrod actually, unfortunately, gives away the positioning and it goes down Whoa. to it, Sherrod able to come out on top. Still a very expensive round for the Mavs to be able to win that thrifty. 
I think I knocked in, hit one shot on the legs, and that's actually what cost him the round. Superior Nexus, good opening kill, and smart way to play around this side to force out the swing from Sacred Exia so Shady could find a refrag. And overall, the crossfires, even with Kadaro and Mesa having a significant weapon disadvantage, they had the man advantage on the site, and they played the crossfires to near perfection. The opening kill was the most important part about that. If they don't have that distraction, and most importantly, if Superior Nexus drops out early, they don't have the distraction to turn into refrags, to turn into a crossfire, to eventually turn into a Oh, 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 Shady not even looking the right way. It's so easy for this blade storm to come through the null command just for good measure. Shared is able to get that one off, but now Kiru has this train, has this Odin in hand as well. The spike goes down nice and easy. The Raiders in an excellent position to win this round. Now the maps have to make their entry in. Share doing a really good job though, able to find Hynoptin on the way down. That's gonna allow for things to get ready as this lockdown is in hand. Let's see if this is gonna be the round to use it. Shared extremely low HP as well. <gasps> Shock dart actually almost killed him. Shock over the top. Flash actually lands, but it's just kills upon kills going away of this. Milwaukee School of Engineering Raiders side. Superior Nexus now being pushed. Bladestorm oh, has now seen them. K Roo switches back to it. Superior Nexus, not long for this world, I do not believe. They're being pushed from the market side, being pushed from CT. Oh. They will find a single kill. And that is all she wrote. Clean finish for the Raiders, losing only two players, and they've now made it 6 1. And they just flew in on that round immediately as soon as it starts. The no Null Command gets popped. Carrier just flies into the background with the Blade Storm, and it just it was just opened up just like that. Excellent aggression coming through. A great response from the Raiders. You want to shut down anything that the Mavs could have gotten on that last one, and they did just that. The Colorado Mavs back onto a little bit of a save. Pink Ranger is going to be potentially buying up that Vandal, but they do have quite a few ultimates to come in. We talked about that lockdown last time. Let's see if it comes into play on this one. The Raiders have one of their own, just in case they want to use it. Sure being used without really any information. It uh, still somehow lands a first shot. Second one, oh, close, but not quite. So only damage and a small amount of info gained by the ultimate. Not the end of the world, but certainly not the beginning of it either. Probably could have saved that to deny the lockdown, but instead no longer the case, at least not a possibility here. And not to try and play at least aggressive towards the B main side, but they don't have all that much help. The Raiders need an opening pick, and they could use one sooner rather than later. Already almost half of the round gone. They've done a, well, a whole lot of nothing. Shady hanging out in the smoke, gets the better side of Scared. Now, uses the recon dart there, but the smoke disappears. Hello. Shady with a crispy headshot out of that sheriff. And suddenly the Raiders. Hey, they're getting a taste of their own medicine. Everything is slowed to a halt, and they're not too sure where to go. That spike is down. They have a lot of ground to cover if they want to make it back. Oh, dub. Good kill across. Pink Ranger taken care of. That's the A site falling, but they're not aggressing off the back of that kill. Instead, Dub One's going to go pick Starting up the spike and left. maybe have the rest of the team go towards B. The problem is still utility on that side of the map, and most importantly, two members. The A site was open for the taking when they went for the time being. They take care of the turret, and they need to go. They need to go now. Nano Swarm out. Superior Nexus waiting towards logs with a shotgun. And shared here with the stinger. They're taken care what? of. Superior Nexus finds only one. The second shot misses. So there will be a spike plant just barely at that. And a 2v2 retake required once more at Colorado Mesa. As the spike will indeed be played. <laughs> Chaotic situations. That's so bad. Oh man. The shorty just goes a little bit wide. But look at that. An excellent shock dart. Both of these agents down. One enemy remaining. And yep. Oh. It's gonna take one bullet, enough to send Karyu into the grave, it's gonna be 2v1 now. Excellent HP pool as well, and Shady more than happy to find that, and has that Vandal in hand. Just like that, the Mavs are able to get their second round here, as uh, it was looking a little bit dicey for the Raiders, and the Mavs were just ready to pounce on them. Come back in the round there for Colorado Mesa. Problems were mounting, but they dealt with them as cleanly as possible, and the Raiders taken care of because of it. Shady in towards mid, important double kill here. If you die, you basically leave the entirety of the A site open because of the full A main control. You can see what actually would kill on the Pink Ranger, but not fully in their favor. Superior Nexus obviously taken care of, but again, still a kill their way. That's what gave them that really even man count and put them in a better position later on. I'll see how this next one goes. Shady ready with it. Has this Odin in hand. Waiting for just a second, I opt in immediately just goes to the side. Doesn't take a lick of damage, but also too forces out one of those swarm grenades. A little bit of utility burned away from the Mavs. 
now we see the Raiders take a little bit more space on A. This is going to be a split pick. Let's see whether or not they're going to be successful in doing so. That barrier orb is ready to go as soon as they get an inkling that this is going to be the site to move in on. I think Ranger get out of time though now. Keru just swings from mid and they had absolutely no information on that side of the map. Cloud burst forward. Harpseek is nice kill across into Keru. They may not know there's a second player here. They do indeed. Harpseek even finds a double of their own. Make it three as well. That may very well end up being the round. Hanoptin in another one versus three scenario. No resurrection this time around, so it is a true 1v3. The problem is they have low HP. They still have all their utility, but they have to find a way to use it. And most importantly, they have to find the time to do so as well, as that glass is still well and truly intact and the door is still closed as well. Well. There's a lot of information if that goes down, but you know what else will do it? If you get spotted by a Silva. Now, the Odin is going to be firing through, but I often did take quite a bit of damage off of that one. Only has 36 left. HP, has to go up against 3. You have to wonder whether or not this is the time where you make that call to make a save, especially too now that you are spotted out, but... Arpiscus really came alive that round. And just like that, it is going to be 3-6. to six. Right now, the Mavs are slowly crawling their way back into this one. Most importantly, during the gun rounds as well, showing that their prowess extends past the first two. Obviously, the Raiders have that exact same case, but the adjustments are there for Colorado Mesa. This is exactly what we saw from them last week. The adjustments were healthy, and most importantly, they learned from mistakes, not repeating them in any of those situations. That's really what helped them as much as it did against NAU JJB. But MSOE are not out of the woods just yet. K. Roo, however, is casually sitting here with a 3.0 KD. Just something to mention, I guess. And Colorado Mesa need to be able to at least shut him down on a consistent basis. You should run. Lockdown. Invested by the Raiders. They're playing this one a little bit closer, understanding that quite a few of these teams like to just push the lockdown instead, but here comes the utility out, so now they're going to be making their way in. Mavs respecting it, backing off completely. Maybe from the shadows as well into just the back there, but an opt-in able to find Shady just with a headshot. And uh, look at this Odin spray, can't find a thing. Nexus is okay, there we go. Okay. And Optin goes down in a sheer stroke of luck, but Spike goes down now. It's going to be 3v4 under the street take. And Dub1 finds a refrag in towards mid. That's a lot of the control that Colorado Mesa thought they had, now gone. Cloudburst looking to clear out Sacred Exia, but they're still safe in towards logs. This is still a lot of real estate control to work with. Hunter's Fury being used here will take care of Superior Nexus. Maybe a follow-up. That will land as well. Why not onto Harpseekus? They are caught out and put in through the ringer. Back corner of Defender spawn is all they have left to them. K will look to swing forward. The Dark Cover will look to drop. No. Harpseekus gets dropped in of their own right. One HP, virtually, for Keiru, and yet they still are able to find the kill. Now seven for the Raiders. Yeah, oh my goodness, look at that, Keiru at 19 kills. That is unbelievable. The next highest in the lobby is Harp Harpsicus with only 10. Unbelievable stuff. But now the Mavs, they've got three ultimates in their pocket. Still waiting for that lockdown to be invested here, but could be really good, especially to paired with that Cosmic Divide. Just really cut off a lot of those set lanes, and then just kind of make that one go forwards. But Raiders, they <laughs> that last round was really good. They just had to use a bunch of stingers, got themselves in, and it's when they play with this fast aggression that they look the best up against this Colorado defense. I want to see them do that a little bit more, but Pink Ranger using the Barrier Orb a little bit preemptively, has the hops, knows how to get on top of it. And uh, here comes the Null Command, the engagement in on A. Air shot across. Keiru walking forward is actually not caught by that recumble. This is a lot of real estate control. Now for this attacking side, Pink Ranger up and over, only finds one. What a switch from Dub as they're able to drop Pink Ranger through the wall and to their head. Keiru with their previously gained real estate will turn it to a kill. And the Raiders now looking to find a Shady being shot through the floorboards as Keiru's been studying their ascent shot lineups and problems just mounting at this point. Shady was hit by a shorty. Actually, I believe a classic right click for zero HP, because that's a thing. And they're about to be swung, not even worrying about the cloud burst. As soon as it falls, so will they. Once again, some of the Raiders decide that, hey, let's go fast. 
That's when they look the best. And quite frankly, a lot of these retakes have left something to be desired coming in from the Colorado Mavs. They have the right idea, but they don't have enough time to get set up, and I really just credit that to the Raiders. They're just pushing into their territory. Usually, you know, if you're if you're the Mavs, you're sitting there like, all right, let's get into position here before we decide to take this engagement. We want to be really clean with it. We want to make sure we're going off our utility properly. And as they get themselves into those positions, Suddenly, next thing you know, Raiders are right up there, have those SMGs in hand, ready to just spray them down. And it's making these retakes just so much more difficult for the Mavs. You really have to hand it to the Raiders here. They're playing a lot more aggressively and they're just really pushing the Mavs into this uncomfortable territory. Colorado Mesa calling a timeout, basically the best possible position. You have one per half, might as well use it in the last round of the half, looking to adjust their play style and figure out what they have learned. Honestly, looking at what they probably could have learned thus far, they have to spread themselves out a little bit more on the sites. If you find two kills on the Raiders' side, then you're basically winning the round off the back of it. But if Mesa is still able to separate themselves while also finding kills off the back of it, that's when you have the lack of refrag abilities in your favor. They also have to guess correctly if they do end up stacking. This correct guess would have to be towards the A side. Is all five players of the Raiders are heading in this direction? If you're in a rush of sight, the last round of the half after a timeout is probably the time to do it. Get out of my way! Yeah. Carry you. Blade Storm. Available. Seen how much of a menace this can be before. Are we gonna be seeing that again? Okay. Engagement utility being tossed in. Raiders very consistent with this and already just storming their way onto site, Kiru. <laughs> okay, a little bit of a weird walk-in, but they're able to get their way in. And now, as soon as they close this door, never mind, they just go in. They already know that Pink Ranger's going to be up there, and they read it like a book. I'm often able to take Shared as well. Nexus trying to keep that one alive. It's going to be a little bit of trade back. The Ares from Shady is able to at least find one, but the spike now goes down and it's suddenly a 1v3 scenario. Shady immediately just dismisses out of that owl drone, looks the wrong way, and it's going to be who oh. else but Keiru with the knife straight to the dome of Shady, and the Raiders find themselves on a 9-3 half. Now, I usually play Initiator when I'm a, a Valorant player. I usually find 8 or 9 kills and a half, 0 0.75, 0 0.8 KPR. Not bad. If you're looking at this point at Keiru, 23 kills in 12 rounds. For all of you mathematologists out there, Spongebob reference, <laughs> that's just under a 2.0 KPR. I'm not going to get into specifics, it's like 1.92 or something like that. But it's scary. And if you're finding well over a kill per round, that's when a team has to be like, okay, this is their MVP, we have to shut him down now. And even then, Dub1 and Hanoptin both have 10 kills, matching Harpsicus, yep. who's top fragging for Colorado Mesa. It's just such a hard position. Sometimes, you know, when your enemy is shooting that well, it's very difficult to try and counter that at all. A lot of information, though, is going to be gained here. Scared, able to escape, but the position is still going to be known. Has to just swing out there, but look oh, in the wrong way. Harpsicus, more than ready to be able to get that kill. And now the engagement from the Mavs is going to be good. They're going to be moving in through market, making their way onto site. Jay Dizzle be swapping out here. Nice little headshot coming in. Able to actually find two. Shady, though, trades that one back. Does get hit a little bit by the alarm bot. So he's a little bit vulnerable here, but Hynopton drops down and gets the kill there. And suddenly it's a 1v2 scenario. We see Sheridan just a not optimal position, but might be able to actually rotate around A. I say now would be a really good time to go the other direction. I'm aware of the fact that at least one player is in the site. The second is most likely still towards CT. You don't have to worry about your flank because of that previously placed Sage Wall. Shout out, Pink Ranger. But Sheridan still has to go over towards the A side. They will have the turret available about the time they plant the spike alongside one nano swarm which is fairly promising considering it's a pistol round and a lack of hp is left. certainly a consistent thing but at this point if you're the raiders you've got to go towards a and now because you cannot afford more and more time given over and now is about the time they'll okay turret sure can be tossed up one more swarm grenade left toss that one onto the spike now sure goes into hell this is going to be interesting, though, because can't play off of that utility. Oh, especially, too, if that knife goes down. Now they know exactly where Shared is playing. And look, they just dropped down opposite ways, expecting it down to be hell. Shared able to escape. It's able to toss down dub one. Hynopton just on the other side there. The turret going to be a little bit more annoying. Hynopton has an idea where they might be. Takes out the swarm grenade. And now Shared has to go in. 
As soon as that defuse does come through here, and it is going to be shared, going to be able to clutch that one up in a 1v2 scenario. 15 HP less. No big deal. The Mavs is find the pistol. That's an important pistol as well. You lose that, you're going down 10-3. Probably losing a conversion round as well. Maybe. I mean, considering you got a spike plant, you could probably buy. But still, a problem situation. And Optin only finding a body shot with that Sheriff close range. Ends up costing them a round. And Colorado Mesa, big, big round. I, I, I cannot understate this, I don't think. That is a massive round victory for Colorado Mesa University. Because, again, they lose it, they probably lose the map, and we're looking at a second map of Lotus fairly quickly. Yeah. As soon as they get to double digits, it's it's so much more difficult. But this at least makes sure the Mavs should be able to get themselves onto that 9-5 half. Already very aggressive here. Carrier was able to pick up the orb, but they lose two as a result. That one being the first to fall down, and now it's going to be open season for the Mavs. They should be able to walk onto that A site and get that spike down, and they've got the weapon advantage here as well. It's going to be up to the Raiders to be able to take a couple of these weapons out of their hands, make it a bit more expensive for them, but otherwise it looks like this is going to be a Mavs win. Aggression here from Colorado. They're going just straight on towards A, and there's no aggression whatsoever from the Raiders. They also really don't have the manpower nor the weaponry to try and fight this one, but would have been nice to at least see them in the general vicinity. Nano Storm on the spike, basically making this round a foregone conclusion. I I'm not really liking Milwaukee School of Engineering's chances. Dark cover towards Maine, possibly a follow up, but information's there, and then Sacred Exia just casually takes 70 damage to a shock dart. It's so annoying. Another shock dart flying around. Nexus goes up. Can't quite secure the kill this way. Finds Dizzle in the air. Hynopton able to at least get one down, but the Mavs more than happy to be able to take that round. And on top of that, two keep a lot of their weapons alive as they look to potentially get a sixth. This would be the round to do it. This is a big round again for Colorado Mesa. Similar to the level of importance to the pistol, but not as extreme. Obviously, you still will buy in the next round regardless of the outcome. And at this point, if you're on the Raider side, you're looking at a must-win situation just the same. You cannot afford Colorado Mesa to pick up this round, win the bonus, have a flourishing economy, and force you onto another save because you're probably looking at a 9-7 scoreline. This is another important round for both squads, but even more so for Colorado Mesa because it would mean the difference between having a decent economy and coming up in this lead versus, well, the complete opposite. Funneling their way through mid. Scared just on the other side. Should be able to at least get the read there. Is going to do just that. Has now paranoia in sight. Doesn't catch anybody actually, but another dark cover going to be tossed down to potentially stall this one out. They've read it correctly. They know that they're coming in onto mid. But the rotation is now going to be moving forwards onto this A site. As we actually see, Fragment is more than enough to deter them. Dub one able to find Shared. And already that's... Oh, Knife gets destroyed. That would have given a lot of information as to what's going on. They could actually uh, try to step across. Harpsika should have heard that. So he's holding this angle. And with the Marshall out misses, no. Shady, not so much with that Spectre in hand. B-Site seems to be the place to go if you're on this attacking side, but Jay Dizzle will find another double kill, this time from the stairs position, and give the man advantage right back to the Milwaukee left. School of Engineering. They're coming back with a vengeance, and most importantly, with better weaponry. Some rifles have been recovered, so by no means is this round over. But that spray through, walking straight in the Nanoswarm, no easy way in. Hanap oh, finds so one with the utility, dub one a second with the Phantom and the Raiders deny the bonus. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought the Mavs were at least going to be able to get the spike down there, but they chose Same. the wrong lane. And just like that, that's why you bring a K-Droid to this map. Just such a good job at just forcing a lot of positioning, especially too when you're on that defense. Jay Nizzle now has gotten two double kills from that pretty much exact same position. So you know that... At this point, the map's got to be looking out for that one. But the Raiders do find themselves onto double digits now. Uh, they were able to keep quite a few of their weapons alive. Fortunately, Sacred is going to only have a Spectre in hand moving into this next round. Not a full rifle, but it's better than nothing. And now, the Mavs, they regress onto mid. Thus far, the Mavs have really enjoyed getting a lot of presence onto mid. And I think the Raiders are doing a better job at reading it now. 
Punisher, he should miss this final shot as well. Dub one finds a double no kill. And is now able to run away. Flash driver on the corner. I believe they forced both off, but Harpsicus will find one back. Keiru waiting in towards mid has been seen. Sorry, main has been seen. But even while being repetitively oh, yeah. scanned by the Owl Drone, is able to get away. Only with one kill, though. And Shady will shut them down. Carbon copied the previous round just this time up. A 3v2 retake required of the Raiders, and they have time to work with. Barrier Orb already expended as well. Shady getting a little bit more aggressive, finds kill. that pick, and that's absolutely massive. Just like you said, Jay Dizzle, the one the flank, is able to find Pink Ranger. Suddenly, it's down to a 2v1. They just have to get this timing good together. Recon Dart is going to be moving in. Shady just on the back of Generators. The Owl Drone gets that information, goes for the swing, can't quite secure it. Jay Dizzle coming out on top. Another double kill for them as the Raiders find their 11th. Another problem point, and one that I don't think Colorado Mesa will be able to recover from. You're almost certainly looking at giving up map point free at this point, looking oh. at their money. I mean, maybe you can buy, but even then it's a stretch. And if you lose this, which you're more than likely going to do considering your economy, you're going to have nothing in the following round. Best case scenario here for Colorado, either full send it here, everybody buys, or half buy at the best. Also, very important double kill from Double One and important single from Keiru. I don't know how either of them got out with a single kill, much less three combined. Yeah, and on top of that too, Jade Dizzle has kind of just been a mainstay, you know, just kind of anchoring things down, very reliable on being able to find a couple of kills. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, when you're Silva, you're not that flashy unless you're getting a couple of kills with the Hunter's Fury or getting those spray downs. But Jay Dizzle has been doing an excellent job at just playing that role to a T. And that's the reason why the Raiders can feel confident on a lot of these rehits. Now, Bladestorm going to be activated for Superior Nexus. Try to even it up a little bit. But like you said, a very big gun disadvantage coming in. And the information is given. Dub One did spot them coming out there and knows that they're coming. Aggression towards A has to go now. Keiru caught out of position, but a null command, fairly well timed. No utility available. This is basically a game of Counter Strike over towards the A side, but Dub One finds a kill before they go down. And opted an all important double across towards the tree oh side. They're looking to stabilize the core. They wouldn't even have to, but they even save a rifle over for the rest of the team. The Raiders now with seven map points to look to send this up 1 0. And their economy is going to be all over the place. No blade storm to pad out the gun diff this time. We're seeing a couple of bulldogs come in, as well as a specter. But keep in mind, still have that cosmic divide available. And if they do get Pink Ranger and Ultimate Orb, that does allow the resurrection to be on the field. And that could be enough if they're able to play it properly. What I worry about though is that a lockdown as well as a Hunter's Fury is online for the Raiders, and those two ultimate alone are really good to turtle materials as well as just Two wolves to re-engage and retake a site. So I think that this works out really well. We're going to be seeing an early Hunter's Fury actually come in from Jay Dizzle. Gets a tag onto one. Might able... Oh, secures the kill as well. And now that's the initiator taken out of the equation for the Mavs. Yeah, but the Cosmic Defy, this is a fake. They've gone around towards the A side. It's been heard now, heard. but a little bit too late. This will be a spike plant and a post-plant situation again. Only ultimate available for either squad at this point in time is the lockdown oh. for the defensive side. And they have lost mid control at the back of it, but Keiru just gets aggressive. Updraft on top of that wall turns into a frag and will give them a blade storm as well. They do not want to waste time, but the problem okay. is they've wasted bodies. Superior Nexus, a 3k on the round. An ace should their team give them the opportunity to get it. But look. Keiru's not wasting any time, will find a double kill of their own. Now looking to clear out this hell position, finds a 3k for themselves, and has now seen the final boss. No a 4k for both jets, but Keiru <laughs> finds the final kill, will have more than enough time to find the defuse, and the Milwaukee School of Engineering Raiders squad will take their own map pick of ascent. That was an unreal way for this map to end out there, but excellent stuff kind of coming in from the Raiders on that last one. Once again, they were the favorites coming into this one. That's not enough to take away from the Mavs, though. We saw a lot of moments of brilliance coming in from this squad. Unfortunately, the Keiru diff just feeling a little bit too strong for this team to overcome. How many kills he got, but uh, minimum 33. Uh, Yikes. I don't know if we can get a final <laughs> number on that one, but a lot, to say the very least. I know for a fact they got 23 in the first half and then however many in the second. 29, so not minimum 33. My bad. Apparently they didn't do too well between the end of the first half and like everything other than the final round. But 
Besides the point, Keiru looked really good to close things out, and the entirety MSOE squad set themselves up for success, and most importantly set Keiru up for success, casually finding 29 kills is no small feat. And in the final round, fun little fact for you, of the five kills found by the Milwaukee School of Engineering, four of them were with ultimates. The Hunter Shiri to find the opener, the Operator was the only kill that was not an ultimate that found a kill for the defensive side, and then of course the Blade Storm that turned into three. Pretty clean finish for them, if I do say so myself. Yeah, absolutely clean stuff coming in from MSOE Raiders. Of course, that was their map pick. We've got map number two, which is the Colorado Mavs pick of Lotus. Just on the other side of this break. We'll see you then.
Welcome back, everybody. It's still the NECC Valorant League. We've still got the MSOE Raiders up against the Colorado Mavs. And uh, after a very pretty one-sided first map there with the Raiders coming out 13 to five, we look forwards at going next to Lotus. Yeah, Lotus, the map pick of the Colorado Mesa University Mavericks as well. They're looking pretty good coming into this. We've seen them play the map before, and they did so to fairly good extents when they played up against Northern Arizona University's junior, junior varsity team. It's like the JV team, which is below the varsity team, but below the JV team. It's a whole ordeal. I, I, I You were asking, what the heck's a JV team earlier? Because, <laughs> we don't have that up here in Canada, okay? Come it's, on. it's not a Canadian thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's understandable. It's, it's like varsity is like the number one team, and then junior varsity is not. And then junior junior varsity is not twice. It's a whole ordeal. Into Lotus we go. Colorado Mesa's map pick, and oh, Milwaukee has chosen the attacking side. And are hovering five duelists, because why not? I don't think that's going to be the case. Usually what we Do are it. seeing uh, is mostly what uh, the maps are kind of showing us on the other side. A lot of teams really preferring to go for this double wall composition. Um, usually when it comes to Lotus, that could be pretty helpful, but usually it's just this fast style of engagement, especially to taking early fights outside of A and C, that really kind of set the pace of the match. Uh, Milwaukee decided to fully hover duelists, and then Colorado fully hovered controllers. They... I'm actually curious as to how that would go. Can we have an all-star game where it's duelists versus controllers? Please and thank you. Uh, NECC, make it happen. Thank you very much. Um, that would be very odd, Select but your funny to say the very least. How does the attacking side choose to go here? I'd assume Sentinel, maybe two of them. Ooh. Getting a gecko. They're not even allowing me to... Can, can we... Can, can you lock it in so we can analyze it? <laughs> there I mean... we go. All right. Yeah, this is pretty stock standard type of stuff. Usually yeah. we see some teams picking Rays over Jet just because, especially on Lotus, things are a lot more closer quarters when it comes to a lot of these pushes. And that's when you're going to get maximum utility out of the boom bot as well as the paint shells. And then, you know, you can blast back around as well. But I'm very curious to see how this Gecko is going to be coming into the fray. Uh, the teams that are starting to use Gecko look really darn good with it. And I really think that that is because of Wingman. Obviously, you know, we see teams just be like, yeah, Wingman, he's cool. Let's just get him the plant just for the heck of it. But one of the largest strengths of it is you've got someone actively planting or diffusing the spike while the rest of your team can just watch angles and make sure you shut down any of the enemy team coming in. And that in itself is an incredibly powerful tool. I saw that actually last week on this map specifically, as a matter of fact. In a 2v1 or a 1v1, you can use Wingman basically to make it a 3v1 or a 2v1. You have one person on the spike, or the Wingman on the spike, while also being able to actively take a gunfight in which you wouldn't have the opportunity to do so. It's an odd situation and very weird to see spikes being diffused in a 1v1, but they're still taking a gunfight as a caster, and probably from a player perspective as well. But it's still very interesting to see how teams play off the back of it. Look at this already aggression coming in from the Raiders onto the C site. Gotta watch out for a lot of this kill for utility though. Share just doing their best job to hold things down. Has that shorty in hand and has plenty of utility, but here comes the counter utility. The Raiders forcing their way in onto the site. Trailblazer taking a good grab, but Jay Dizzle shuts down Shared, and now this is going to be the Raiders being able to move in. Dizzle getting that spike down. We'll have to back off as we do see the Mavs get themselves set up for a 4v5 retake. The important part there is they get the spike down in an open position, which can be watched from main on that main mound. Pink Ranger looking to retake from the short position. The most important part of this retake is can it come through from the rotation on main? There's information. One kill almost found. Only a shot to the head, though. Hanakton somehow survives through it, and Keiru finds a kill off the back of it. That should be the round as well. The door opening again. The second time may very well be the charm. <laughs> Arpsekis does find one kill, but that's all they will find. Keiru a double and opt in a double as well, and MSOE walk away with a round victory, and a fairly clean one at that. Yeah, and let's take a look forwards here, because now Keiru is playing this Gecko, and as we know, Keiru doing a pretty fantastic job on previous on the previous map of just fragging out, and so we might be able to see this ultimate come online really quick. And the thing about the Gecko Walt is that after you use it, you're actually able to pick it up again after using it. So it not only is a really good tool at potentially detaining a couple of agents, but also too, a really good scout. You go out there, see somebody, they run around the corner, you can just pull it all the way back and you can pick that thing up and you've got a second round. So that is incredibly powerful as the Raiders once again, take a look at the C site, only a Killjoy holding things down. 
flash forward, looking to get through. That lands onto four different players, but unfortunately they can only find one of the four it landed on. Bot taken care of, Wingman looking to get that spike down, and Jay Dizzle, again, the shrouded step to the high ground, able to find a kill, and that should be it. This is a problem for Colorado. If they cannot deal with this aggression in any capacity, they are going to have more problems than they can deal with, and that seems to be the case thus far, but it's only been the first two rounds. Now's the time where they can kill it. And look at this, Shady just got everybody, but unfortunately the timing on the flash just wasn't clearly enough. And the fact that Kairu can pick up a lot of that utility after it gets expended makes it so much more difficult to try and play around this uh, composition. Because usually, you know, when agents use their utility, you got a little bit of time before uh, they can use it again, especially to for just their signature abilities. But not quite the case when it comes to this gecko. A uh, Dizzy and Wingman can be picked up at any points of the game, making things a lot more difficult. But the Raiders taking a bit of a different approach here, completely just slowing things down. But no way, Dub One gets superior Nexus just with a. Spectre from distance? That's kind of unbelievable. They kill again. Cutting light. Doesn't land. Shady is forced away, and the dark cover actually keeps their eyes from being glazed over. Split. Following up Guiding Light, this time from the defensive side, but it's Sacred Exia able to find the kill. This is a problem again for the Mavericks. They do not have a response to the unbridled aggression here from MSOE. Here's the aggression. Oh, and it lands as well. They didn't even need it. Dub one. Shady taken care of, and so one V5. Okay. And a clean one at that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, you know. That was a bonus round, by the way. Yeah, so the Gecko Alt Thrash, uh, after you use it, you can pick it up again. Didn't even need to pick it up again, just because this is how aggressive the Raiders are playing. And when it comes to the, just this individual skill uh, that this team is kind of bringing in, the Raiders look extremely strong in that regard. The Mavs have a couple of good ideas, but I think it's just this very aggressive push that the Raiders are pushing uh, that just make it so difficult for the Mavs to be able to hold them back and they're once again going to be forced onto a save as the Raiders are now 3-0 getting themselves set up yet again for the C site leaving it all up to a Killjoy to try and hold it down Question again they will look to clear out a lot of this utility. They have noted the fact that there are alarm bots and nanosorms over towards the main position. Of course, the turret is still up as well, but here comes the aggression. Alarm bot goes off. Wingman looking to get that spike down will actually be able to do so over towards the main position. And Sacred Exia is so very close, there's nothing they can do about this. But no, the nanosorm denies Wingman from getting that spike down, so the spike is down on the site itself and not in a planted position. Pink Ranger will return, but a two for two, now three for two trade on the site itself, leaves Superior Nexus in a 1v3. They don't have spike control, and the spike's heading its way over towards the B side. With a marshal, they need to retake. Luckily, they should be able to trade it out for a different weapon. Yeah, should be able to at least pick up another rifle or something on the ground. We'll do just that. Vandal in hand. Has to take this 1v3 scenario. And uh, let's see how this one goes. It's not looking too good, especially to going up the player against the players that are left in this round. And Crossfire is already being set up, as we do see that sky go looking. Yeah, there it is. Um, I did want to quickly comment, if you will let me, on one of the drawbacks from Wingman. And we actually saw a little bit of that on the last round, where, you know, if you send Wingman in onto the site, you have to full commit to it. Because the problem is, is if Wingman has that spike in hand, if Wingman goes down in a very precarious situation, your team can't move in to protect the spike. Well, you know what? You've just given the spike over to the defenders. They can set up crossfires over it. It makes it extremely difficult for your team to be able to move into it. So you have to be careful. Wingman's kind of that double-edged sword. And unless you get that down to a T, uh, it can put your team in a pretty precarious situation on some of these rounds. Colorado need to defend this time around and they have guessed correctly a four person stack over towards the safe side well technically three with the fourth being very easily available to turn their attention should it be required but the aggression here for the raiders has to go quickly they cannot afford for the rotation nor that possibility of a condensation on them to cost them the round if they take too long it may very well end up with them being condensed on there's a swing off the back of a guiding light but so kru is able to flourish off the back of the trailblazer a big opening kill a flash around the corner should land superior nexus only caught by the paranoia but it's good enough as the aggression again will work out wingman again will get the spike down and nobody's able to deny it another spike plant here for the raiders as they've seemingly not been stopped in that bit of aggression and double one even getting out 
shared as they try and swing. Well, look, it's in a bad position here. Oh. Okay, all right. It works out in the end, but you can see it was just, even though they got the spike down, they didn't have sight control. And that was a little bit scary for a second. It really looked like the Mavs might have been able to capitalize on some of that chaos, but just coming a little bit short. And now the Raiders are now up five to zero. Things are not looking too good for the Mavs. They're going to be on a little bit of a split buy coming into this one as well. We are going to be seeing Superior Nexus have that Vandal in hand. But thus far, the Raiders on their executes have looked pretty darn good. Even when there are a couple of hiccups, they're more than ready just to make sure that they move in there and take down their opponents before things get a little bit too out of hand. This time, Colorado has guessed wildly incorrectly. Superior Nexus is the only one in the general vicinity of the A site, much less oh. one that can do something about this. Sacred Exia may be caught out, though. They're using their Trailblazer. The flank from behind finds only one kill. The door has since closed. A follow-up from Superior Nexus now there, and they can take care of the wingman. That's a spike plant to die, and the spike is now down on the site. Dub1 finds a single refrag, but that's all she wrote. The spray through the wall, Kru seen, Kru low, and Superior Nexus on for a 4k. They are okay. finally denied, and it's down to the two versus do. Showstopper now being Use dub one around the corner oh. looking for it and the heat seeking missile finds harp Seekus. it's down the shared in a one versus two 37 hp only and the boom bot does not see them it will expire as it turns the corner oh, no. but here comes that alt and it's kru actually taken care of dub one's reposition though may cost shared the round yeah shared looks for it oh, two hp two hp left be sticking this spike here, but even if it's just a little bit of a blast back, that'd be more than enough. And Paint Shells get invested in. Cher oh, has no escape whatsoever. So close. Bit of an unwinnable situation, but you know what? At least he got the thrash out of that gecko. Uh, obviously, that's an ultimate. So it is a little bit of a costly round, but Superior Nexus really trying to keep the Mavs in this round. And that was a KRU level performance. Honestly, amazing stuff coming out from Nexus to be able to pull that one off and make it as close as it was. Up one to the four. Look at the timing. Probably what? Yeah, four tenths of a second. If that paint shell is thrown four tenths of a second later, that's the round over. And Colorado getting the defuse in. Doesn't happen. Now a full 5v5 being set up over towards this A side. And the aggression from Colorado Mesa. Look at this. But uh, uh, <laughs> Milwaukee's going the other way. They're like, yeah, I don't really Look at that, look at the Seekers all, go. Oh my gosh, that's they know. All the information. Yeah, look at that. They're like, wow, okay, we know where they're all coming from. So this is going to be a very fast plant, and defense should be able to get set up pretty easily. Thanks, shut out, and opt-in looking to swing. Instead, it will walk away. Jay Dizzle, not with their life, however. Follow-up alarm bot, guiding light around the corner, and Harpsicus is now putting in from the backside of B. By no means is this round over. That's two rifles now collected, as well here for Colorado, and Harpsicus on that flank is able to turn it into a kill. That split attention working out nearly perfectly here for the attacking side. Well-timed paint shells turn into at least one kill as Sacred Exia so will swing off the back of it, and a follow-up kill as well. It's a one versus two. Sacred Exia needs to look for the kill, has to swing this wall, and is shut down by Shady. A 3k and a thrifty. What a well put to get around from the Mavericks. That's some Scooby-Doo shenanigans going on there, you know? <laughs> the entire team is just kind of passing ships in a night. Uh, as we see the defenders run out of A side, as the def as the attackers run into B, but honestly just an amazing read from Harpsicus. Me being able to move out there and getting that flank set up, that was an excellent amount of picks that just forced the attention to be so divided and really just put the Raiders' backs against the corner. A lot of ultimates generated from that last round as well. The Colorado Mavs have that resurrection, Cosmic Divide, as well as Lockdown for this next round, and they need to start converting these rounds if they want to keep this competitive. Now we see it is going to be a split up from the Raiders, potentially just looking to see what they can get, but Nexus is already down. Dizzy gets tossed up, but Carrier can pick that one right up. Just like nothing happened. Good aggression from the Raiders. If they can push off the back of this, they're in a really good position. Resurrection, however, will bring Superior Nexus right back into the fight. So that man advantage now nullified. Pretty good position back the other way for the Mavericks. If Raiders push C, like, right now, they should probably be able to take the site for free. Lockdown used on that side of the map is a pretty good time to do so. They'll push everybody out and they will oh, look to go, they're going to go the other way. The old the toilet has worked out perfectly. Oh my goodness, this is such a smart play. 
Oh man, you hate to see this happen, but like when it does, it, it's so satisfying. Um, we are going to be seeing now the Raiders are going to be making their way all the way onto this A-Site. A uh, wingman is going to have the spike. They're going to look to plant it. And uh, this time, though, the Raiders will be able to completely seize the site. Trailblazer are going to be used first by the maps to try and get that information. But uh, it's going to be down there. Wingman gets picked up as well. The dub one with a very excellent pick. Pink Raider goes in for the kill, but it is going to be a squat. That's going to make that one happen. Shared still trying to get a little bit of space onto A. But look, this is already down to two, th three. And the information is already given to the Raiders. Shared, though. Well Still good for it. How does Shared? How does Shared find that? Now they're looking to take the site. And they have the cosmic Wait, divide up. The Estra fell after it was put down. Well timed paint shells on towards the spike as the cosmic divide will fall. Last so where so will their oh, concealed cover. Paranoia. paranoia around the corner. Dub one doesn't even need it. Clean double kill, shared taken care of, and the proactivity from dub one rather than the reactivity as I mentioned in our previous series works out here for the <laughs> Milwaukee School of Engineering as they go up 7-1. They find the Brazil. Yeah, you'll love to see this. It's just so good. And quite frankly, uh, Dub1 was doing really well on the last map, but in this duelist role has really just been able to just fly forwards. And on top of that too, on a race, that's where you want to see that level of aggression and just adaptability and quite frankly, mobility that you want from your duelist agent. Now, the Raiders spread themselves out yet again. It's going to be typical engagements coming through here, but this time, Nexus, able to find the first pick onto Keru. It's going to make things a lot more difficult for the Raiders to engage with. 4v5, they don't have that benefit of a resurrection, and most importantly, the Thrasher off the board as well. I think that was a big power point when they had it in previous rounds, so minor inconvenience for them this time around. Sacred Exia, however, will gain the ultimate orb and will just casually recover the Seekers. If they want to throw them out, they have the opportunity to do so. And what do you do if you're Milwaukee School of Engineering here? Obviously, you can go back towards B, fairly low amount of pressure on that side. C, obviously, also a conversation. Uh, basically, anywhere but A. Yeah, anywhere but A is a very good way to go about it. But unfortunately, it looks like they might have read things a little bit incorrectly. Got themselves set up and start to make their way through, but they know that operator is there. Dub1 goes down. Nexus able to find that with the op. This is that next shot as well. Is looking for an opportunity. Actually gets wall banged by Sacred. That's an absolutely Five massive pick. Now the engagement for the Raiders is going to be coming through as the Seekers are going to be active. Oh, but Sacred Exia! A double as they line up. That's the A site fallen. I thought the A site was the worst possible option. Turns out they turn it in the best possible scenario. Turret down. A lot of control now here for the Raiders' side. They have the full back side of sight, the full sight itself, and all of Doors' control as well. An opt-in Swarm Grenade around the corner, that'll land on the top side. But the only way of aggression here for Mavs is through the short doors. Guiding light around the corner, that will not land. An opt-in caught between the pillars may be able to be <laughs> caught out, but it's Jay Dizzle from the doors. Shutting him down across, and a clean double will give the Raiders eight. That's tough. And already, look at that. Kiru has Thrash available yet again. I think we've seen three ultimates from this Gecko in this half alone. And on top of that, too, isn't even really at the top there, but just so consistent at getting the ultimate orbs at the start of each of those rounds. Tosses out the Dizzy, and then immediately just swings out on that Seaside and picks up the ultimate orb before anybody can really contest that. So, let's see how they want to play off of it. I imagine it is going to be a little bit of an engagement tool, as like I said, you can pick it up one more time before you use it again, but it's going to be two guiding lights going in from opposite sides. The Mavs have a good read on this one as they push out of sea. Good proactivity, Skerexia. My apologies. We'll look to back away now, so they don't want to overaggress in disadvantageous situations. Scouting letter on the corner will not land, but that's a lot of information now. It's an opt-in looking to hold down this cross. They do not want to give over this real estate for free, but they're worried about too many angles at the same time. You can see they're trying to go A, but they've given up all of C to do so. There's a lot of real estate control back for the Mavericks, as they know it should be A or B, and they have so much utility over towards that B side. They have enough information. There's the Thrasher forward. Superior Nexus with the Blades, and we'll find a kill, and then back away. That reposition almost turning into a second kill, but it turns out it cost them their life. This refrag from behind is not there. Sared caught off guard, and the flank is all that remains here for the Mavericks. Yeah, Wingman going to be planting now. Thrash back in five seconds. 
Dizzy gets tossed out as well to get a little bit more information. Nothing is really given away, but once again, the Mavs, they don't really have the level ready to go. And here comes Kiryu with the Thrash is going to be active, looking to at least attain one. Will do just that, and it's going to be the knife kill comes through as Jay Dizzy cleans up Shady on the back. And now the Raiders looking at potentially getting double digits in this half as they are running through the Mavs. All you gotta do, hold W. And Mouse won every so often, you have a fairly clean attacking setup. At least that's seemingly what the Raiders have done thus far. Obviously watching your flanks every so often, and I don't know, having better utility usage here and there also helps. But honestly, from this point of view, Colorado really hasn't done anything wrong. A lot of times when you see a 9-1 scoreline, you say, oh yeah, this team has done X, Y, and Z wrong. It really hasn't been the case. I mean, obviously losing a few gunfights, naturally you can make up for that, but... It, there hasn't been a single situation where you said, oh, that's a massive mistake from Colorado. No, not at all. It's just the Raiders finding one or two small mistakes that I can barely even see, even with third-person perspective and wall hacks, and spike. being able to turn it to round victory after round victory after round victory, and also helping out the timing as well. Yeah, like it's literally, the, the Raiders are the perfect example of a team where if you give them an, an inch, they're going to take a mile. Uh, it's just these little cracks in these compositions where they are able to move things through. And the next thing you know, they're going to be pushing that advantage forwards. And that's why a lot of these rounds have kind of gone their way already onto this A-site wingman. Going to go for the plant. Sa Sacred Nexus, just on the back. Superior Nexus, sorry. Just on the back here with this Vandal in hand, but not the team available to move in. What I want you to take a look at, though, is where this omen is. Could be really big on this flight. Yeah, they have to go quickly. They cannot oh, afford to leave their team geez. out in the dry. Shady, the Guiding Light actually returned upon them, and that could cost them the fight. Seekers are going to be used. That'll catch out the flank. They should know about it, but they have absolutely no idea. Sacred Exe is catching them off well enough to make this a fully possible two versus two. Harpsicus is catching out Keiru, and Jay Dizzle on this flank needs to go. They take too long, though, and the Paranoia from behind should be able to land. It lands onto both players. The swing towards the spike itself. Jay Dizzle has more than enough time and is now looking to swing Shady. At least has it all the way to half, oh, it's but it's so not going to matter. The spray is there, and Jay Dizzle's flank is good enough. Basically, the perfect time, as he's Last able to clutch it out, and the Raiders find double digits in the first half. Yeah, and that last part that you said there is so important here. Raiders get themselves onto double digits. A little bit of shenanigans happening onto the site. The Seekers kind of get activated here, but Jay Dizzle played this one perfectly. Uh, just kind of holding it back, being more of a deterrence to allow that spike to be so difficult to defuse. Now, last round in this half, we're going to be seeing the Colorado Mavs be on a little bit of a half by here, buying whatever they can. But the Raiders are more than happy. They've got that showstopper online as well. And... You know, Dub1 is just looking for a good opportunity as we're, we've come back all the way around. They're going to be hitting the C site yet again. We're trying to hit the C site in a fairly healthy amount of time. Showstopper now used, but they've already smoked off the entirety of site. Nobody's in the general vicinity. If they throw this towards a close corner short, they'll be able to catch off Shared. Ooh. Wrong side, though. No kill for them. Very close, but not close enough, unfortunately enough. Wingman able to get that spike plant in a full 5v5 retake again. Carbon oh, copy to no just the last round. Hanokton, however, finding the opening kill onto their doppelganger. Nice opening kill from Shady to try and regain CT control, but it just may not be enough. And the Seekers now used to gaining more than enough information as Superior Nexus is caught out, but they are still able to get out with their life, and Harpsicus on that flank is able to find a kill of their own. The shots of the Guardian not landing. Harpsicus now from the main position finds a follow-up kill as well, and Dub 1 now in a 1 versus 2. That Cloudburst doesn't extend as far as it should, though, and that'll cost Superior Nexus their life. Harpseek is from main, swinging towards the stairs, but they're caught off guard, switching weapons. A 1v2 for the second round in a row. This time it's dub one to take the mantle, and Raiders to take the half, 11 to one. That's a tough scoreline to come back from. Oh boy. No. Raiders, Raiders 2 also got pistol round last time. Raiders have been really good when it comes to this pistol round as well. But to be fair, that was their aggressive half, and you can tell that they were playing very aggressively. I imagine the Raiders are probably going to continue to play aggressively and push out here. But all it takes is just one round, and that be, might be more than enough. Let's see what the Mavs have queued up here. This is their map pick, but thus far it hasn't been looking too great for them, unfortunately. Defensive side needs to be good here for the Raiders. And by good, I mean, you know, two of 12 rounds. Flawless. Should be good <laughs> enough. Yeah, on the other side, if the Mavericks want to win things in regulation, they need to be flawless. And, 
what what do the Mavericks do here? You're always in an uncomfortable situation because you're always saying, oh, I could be up against Matt Point if we lose this round. Match Point at that. And Jay Dizzle finding the opening kill. It's just aggression from the Raiders' side. Guiding light around the corner. This should be the escape button press for the Raiders, but no, they're just still going to go. And, well, mainly because they put a wall up. Yeah. Very room. It gets invested here as well. Jay Dizzle goes up, gets punished immediately for it. But look at this. And often is able to push out as well. It's a lot of space just being made. More importantly, though, they are going to be engaging in onto this B side. A lot of Killjoy utilities still around, and thankfully Killjoy is still alive to be able to activate that one from the defense. As this side, Nopton actually gets one, but now he's getting cramped on both sides, trying to stay alive, able to at least find one kill, but Superior Nexus finally trades it back. Getting lit around the corner. Odd position now, especially here for the Raiders, but a one versus three. Superior Nexus finds one, not able to find the second, though. Clean double swing. Dub one was even there on the other side if needed. And the Raiders on to match points. The Mavericks need 11 straight rounds, or this will end fairly quickly in a 2 0 fashion. Yeah, and that's the thing too that you forget that, you know, Gecko brings to the table as well. A little bit of a molly. That mosh pit can really slow things down because you see it activate and then it takes a second before it actually detonates and you can tell that it just completely slowed the pace of the Colorado mobs. Mavs, when that was what they needed to do. They needed to go aggressive, weren't able to do so, and immediately just got cut down. And just like that, the Raiders are on match point. Weapons in both of their these teams' hands. Let's see how this goes out. It's going to be a very aggressive push out of A, but this time the Mavs making their way towards C. Just Killjoy trying to slop them down. Raiders, this defensive side has already set up fairly well. Guiding light around the corner. I'm not sure if they know there are multiple players oh, here. Geez. Good alarm bot. No scope headshot for Superior Nexus because why the hell not? An opt in. That could be their cutoff point. Dub one still close though. Is just dropping straight in. Looking to play aggressive, but it's dropped with a Bucky. Almost a second there for Shared, but they're down to 8 HP. Problems mounting here as Shared's taken out as well. A 2v2, but Jay Dizzle is still playing aggressive towards main, but they've now been seen. Now down to this 2v2, just like you said. Both of these teams investing pretty heavily here. Whoever makes it out on top, it's still not going to be pretty in the economy-wise if the Mavs win. Now Jay Dizzle actually was able to at least spot one out here, finds the first pick, and now it's just up to Pink Ranger. Goes to the Shadow Step to get a little bit of confusion going, but goes oh, for the drive-by as those SMGs go. And the Raiders win it over the Mavs, 13-1 on Lotus. Seems like a completely different matchup as well over on Lotus. The Raiders seem so much more confident, especially in their play. You could see from the start of the game, everybody held W into C, everybody held W into C again, and they just basically went A for the rest of the game until the final round. It looked so clean for them. And there was, again, really nothing that Colorado did wrong. A few lost gunfights did help that, you know, Kiru's kind of cracked. But honestly, <laughs> everybody was stepping up. And there wasn't a single player you were looking at saying, oh yeah, they found 29 kills this match. Granted, there were only 14 rounds, but still the same conversation. It was 13-5, 13-1, but the 13-5 matchup looked extremely close. 13-1, not so much, but again, Colorado looked clean in their playstyle. It was just their execution in the end that was really costing them. Singular gunfights here and there could probably help in that conversation, but it was really scary to show how much ground the Raiders can take. You said it. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. I think that may be a little bit of an understatement considering how <laughs> dominant that matchup was. Yeah, the Raiders looked absolutely clean, and they're going to be ending things off with a nice 7-2 scoreline. Uh, unfortunately, the Colorado Mavs are going to be at a 4-5 scoreline. But you know what? Hey, this is a pretty fantastic way to kind of end out the season. And uh, yeah, Raiders is going to be a team you want to look out for, especially on Lotus. I haven't seen a team look that dominant on Lotus in every single game I've cast on Lotus. I had to think about that one for a second. But uh, yeah, that just about wraps things up here. So uh, TTL, you got any closing thoughts for us before we end the stream? I do. Uh, quick notes. Rainbow Six Siege has their final day of the regular season tomorrow. Keep an eye on that before they have a one-week break similar to Valorant until the playoffs start. League of Legends does not. Their week break is this week. However, we are still hosting CLOL matches. So 7 and 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday. CLOL matches on NECC underscore esports and NECC2, I believe, are the two Twitch streams. Check those out in place of the NECC matches and then come back next week for the final week of regular <laughs> season. Similar situation for Overwatch 2, which has April 13th as their final day of regular season play, and Rocket League, dot dot dot, 
Same case for them. April 14th is their final day of regular season play. Valorant is done for the regular season. Two weeks time. Come back for the playoffs. Marks, take us away. Yeah, and that just about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. We had excellent games of Valorant, but like Dan said just over there, uh, this is it for the regular season. We've got playoffs just around the horizon. All of these teams, it's going to be the best of going up head to head in that playoff bracket. It's going to be exciting. A great way to end the academic year, but we will catch you next time. My name has been Marks. This has been Time to Light. We've had Carolyn as our observer and Storm Warrior as our producer, and we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good night, everybody.